Okay. We're going live, and then I'm going to play the intro. It's about two minutes, and then we'll get going. Okay, we're live. Freedom is not a monolithic, indivisible entity. It is not a word. You are free when you can do what you want to do without coercive interference. We were born educated and have lived all of our lives in a society which is psychotically out of touch with reality in many respects. Do not be so naive as to think that this total immersion in the surrounding near universally accepted fantasy world has left your unconscious mind untouched. We are born among sheep, raised by sheep, educated as by and for sheep, and before we knew better, some of it got through. The general population does not know what freedom is. The activities of the general population are not good indications of when and how you can be free and at what, at, at what cost. An overall decrease in freedom for the general population does not necessarily mean a decrease in freedom for you unless your actions are essentially the same as those of the general population. You can't watch most people to determine when you are free. Most people will not take advantage of freedom. This has been true in the past and will continue to be true for quite some time into the future. Regardless of the opportunities, their lives will continue as usual. Don't be conceptually blinded by paying too much attention to the general populace. A rational person does not count upon gaining freedom at some vague time in the future by means of sweeping social changes or other means of which are beyond his control. Before you can decide how free you are and how to become freer, you have to determine what you want to do. What do you, not the general population, want to do? Freedom is not free. It would be nice if it were, but there are people willing to coerce. Making some freedom for yourself requires purposeful action. You must know what you want to be free to do, and you must organize your resources toward the end of creating that freedom for yourself. Welcome to Toxic Airwaves. Oh, wrong one. Stoked about tonight. Got Skeef and Shane joining me tonight. How you guys doing? Doing pretty good. Hey, doing doing well. It's uh, great to be here chatting with you guys. Yeah, yeah, I'm stoked. That intro, um, I just cut up one of the videos that you did. Just like point by point. Really liked it. <laughs> but... Yeah, can you guys imagine living your life uh, determining what freedom is based on looking at the general population around you right now? Yeah, it'd it'd be depressing. It would. I mean, it was depressing. I got. I got back and I got. I started the uh, my first. uh, I started my radio show back in 2015, and yeah, it was pretty unbearable back then. And uh, I mean, it only. uh, It only greatly greatly uh you know ramped up in the past couple of years but yeah that's a good point yeah so ski if you're gonna grow your hair out long i heard i i i am not we were talking about that in the telegram that uh i'm balding and so i keep the buzz cut because uh, if i grow it out too long then i'm uh basically a walking restraining order waiting to happen does not look good so nice I'm gonna keep the buzz cut good idea <laughs> how to had it for about a decade, probably keep it for the rest of my life. I, I go through this process of wanting to grow up my hair all the time and then decide that it's too much of a pain in the ass and then cut it. I, <laughs> I go through that like every year in the winter time. It's insanity. It's expecting doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But yeah. So who are you, Shane? Um, yeah, so I guess, uh, to, to put it simply, I'm a, uh, I call, I call myself a self liberator. I've been uh, focused on solutions to increase personal freedom since the, the end of 2015. And that's, uh, um, that's what I do is, uh, um, basically build, a, I'm, I'm, I've been building, um, slowly, but surely, um, tr- you know, as really resilient a lifestyle as possible. Um, as I call them liberated lifestyles where my, my time is my own. I don't have a, you know, nine to five, um, sort of society job as I would call it as, as, as I would call it. And, uh, um, I've got a 22 acre homestead, uh, here in what I call the free, free Republic of Pasnia. Um, it's about an hour and a half Northeast of St. Louis. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've got, uh, chickens, ducks, turkeys, um, goats and lambs, and, uh, um, got some rabbits that we're just, uh, we're, we're getting ready to start uh, breeding. But, uh, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, a little about me and yeah, I, I do the Vani podcast, uh, where we, um, examine the uh, freedom strategy, uh, known as Vani from the, the 1960s 
Uh, we covered the philosophy in, in season one back in, in 2017. Uh, season two is the practice of Banu, um, what Rayo actually talked about back in the 1960s and, and 70s in his books, and then uh, where we are currently are on season three. Uh, basically, um, yeah, building upon, uh, you know, building upon and updating uh, this uh, this frame strategy because, um, you know, as we were commenting a moment ago, um, Rayo saw the Serral Society much like we do right now uh, in the 1960s and uh, took drastic, drastic lifestyle change, you know, made drastic lifestyle changes um, to avoid the, uh, the the coercion that he saw yeah. and the danger that he saw. Um, so that's what we're doing in season three. And then I guess the other thing I'll, I'll mention just uh, momentarily is I, I founded uh, Liberty, Liberty Under Tech Publications. Uh, we're a uh, solutions focused uh, publisher. We got about twenty or so, twenty or so books on our on our catalog right now, including uh, Citizen Ver- Citizens Version and Sabotage, uh, second round book on strategy, hashtag Agora, um, really good strategy guides, crypto Agora stuff, fiction stuff like that. And if you're an author, uh, you know, looking for assistance publishing, uh, we do uh, we do do that too. So um, yeah, that's uh, I guess a little bit of an introduction. Yeah, no, that's dope. I'm super. I'm super excited to hear about a lot more of this stuff. Cause it's like something there's Bitcoiners, I think in general are pretty solution focused, but not, I think not nearly as much as we need to be. And so I think that we have, I think just not we, but like just people in general, but especially like people in the Bitcoin space and that listen to the show, I think have a lot to, a lot to learn in that area. And that's certainly something I'm super interested in hearing, hearing a bunch more about. Yeah. Yeah, in the Bitcoin space, for sure, um, we've seen a major shift over the past year towards uh, regenerative agriculture, general self-sustainability, and kind of moving away from, you know, the stupid, like, price goes up, big number good nonsense, um, which has been cool, because I think that's, like, what the Bitcoin journey is, is, like, I see Bitcoin as being the base layer of entering into that life of self-liberation. It's kind of, like, the, one of the base building blocks of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but yeah. Let's get a few quick definitions. So what's Vanu and what's Pasnia? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so Vanu is uh, an awkward contraction of the words voluntary, not vulnerable, and uh, just briefly defined, it's uh, it's a freedom strategy and a philosophy um, with the goal um, of, or with the individual practitioner, uh, the goal is to become as invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the serve all societies humanly possible so that's from both from public coercers uh the state and then also private coercers just assholes who violate person and property because they exist and so they need to be defended defended against as well um uh, so that's uh that's vanu and uh um, then pasnia is uh um, yeah like i guess it's a free republic of pasnia um it's uh, um the acronym paz at the beginning is a permanent autonomous zone so the the idea here is i uh I saw what was happening in 2020 and I got some, well, I got some lambs and goats. That was my, I, I was kind of, uh, I guess I, uh, I, was, I jumped to action. I got goats and lambs, which wasn't, wasn't the worst idea. And, uh, I started, I started getting towards that, that food cell sufficiency aspect, um, that, that sort of area. And, uh, I, I recalled, uh, Erwin S. Erwin S. Strauss wrote a book in uh, the 1960s called how to start your own country. And, uh, he talked about a model country idea and I was like, well, I got I, I I built upon that and basically the idea is that Pasnia is the first free country in existence right now, um, self sufficient permanent autonomous zones um, where uh, basically a parallel society an alternative economy not just you know food self sufficiency food self sufficiency but um, we've I've already got someone in the network who's doing some more of the small industrial stuff he's got a laser engraver we're going to come out with um, you know Pasnia silver um, Pasnia silver coins um, uh, so so that's uh, um, so yeah, basically a, par- a parallel economy, the first free country in, ex- in existence right now. Um, and uh, so like here, um, where it's where where I am, it's Veritas, Pasnia, like I said, an hour and a half northeast of St. Louis. And uh, then the others have got uh, Roots, Pasnia out in New York. Um, there's uh, one over in, in Germany, I think, somewhere. And then uh, um, there's uh, one up in Michigan, too. So yeah, the, the idea is um, basically um, the coercion is definitely ramped up significantly in the survival society. And it's not so much like that. It's not, you can do some things and kind of go along. Um, it's to the point where like, if you need, like if you break your arm and you go to the emergency room, like you might not be able to get in without, you know, without cards and such. And, uh, um, that's, um, untenable. <laughs> so, um, I've been, like I said, I've been working towards solutions for a while. And this is kind of the, the grandiose strategy is, um, is, you know, um, the homestead here, and then also building up this network, um, this vetted network so that it's not just, uh, you know, open to anybody. 
um, but it uh, incorporates the principles of, uh, you know, the se second round principles and uh, security culture. So you have to be vetted to come out here. Um, we have to know you personally, um, or we have to know someone, um, someone, um, we both have to know someone that can vouch for your, uh, you know, your reputation, your, your uh, um, the fact that you forced one the use of coercion. So yeah, it's a free public capacity. We've got a constitution. We've got a declaration of independence. And um, we had, a, um, I guess it was 2020 um, in, uh, in September, we had a, what I call the rebirth of freedom ceremony. We had like, I uh, had, you know, 20 people out here to, uh, you know, sign the constitution and, uh, and, and all that stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very much a serious, you know, second realm network, um, but we're having fun while we're doing it. Um, so um, yeah, that's a, uh, uh, yes, a short instruction to Pasnia, and if, any, if anyone wants uh, more information, Pasnia.com is the website for that. And uh, we're always looking for individuals to join. We've got a Pasnia seed exchange on Telegram. Um, we're going to have a, a lot of cool stuff like that, um, you know, where we're actually, you know, physical trade, um, you know, amongst uh, amongst second realms among Pasnias. And uh, there's a, a lot that we're, we're building and working towards. And uh, we are a Bitcoin uh, preferred republic. Um, you know, we'll, we'll need, uh, you know, some sort of digital currency, you know, as a, you know, to um, go between Pasnias. And uh, I, I'm, uh, you know, definitely, it's, it's definitely Bitcoin for me, nothing else. So, uh, yeah. Nice. And yeah, we got Zorn in the chat. Zorn says, need more cowbell. You don't know me. Hashtag re. I'm not sure. But I should add cowbell to my uh, soundboard for sure. But yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's, I mean, this is impressive stuff because that's stuff that, you know, I think we all need to be focusing on right now because, you, like you said, it's pretty um, dramatic right now. Like, if you break your arm, you might not be able to get into it, um, get it fixed, or, you know, even worse. Uh, wild, wild stuff right now. But yeah. We t we tend to shit on the Constitution on this show. Why why did you guys sign a Constitution? <laughs> so um, no, like I I'm with you on that one. Um, yeah, I think probably uh, you know the the U.S. Constitution is is probably the most tyrannical documents ever penned. Um, we did uh, um, we've talked about it. I think it was even on Elio Radio back in 2017 or thereabouts. Um, but uh, Benjamin Tucker had uh, like there's there's four constitutional monopolies like eminent domain. Um, there, there's I don't remember all four of them, but like yeah, the Constitution is terrible in terms of in terms of personal freedom. Um, it's I mean the Articles of Confederation um, were made were 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 better, um, but still we're talking about uh, we're talking about coercive governments. So. Um, yeah, and that's and I guess that's that's another thing I should mention in terms of the it's 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 um, a model country and it's culture jamming in a sense. Um, so we have a constitution, but uh, basically the only thing people agree to is that you know privacy privacy is encouraged. Um, we we encourage the use of pseudonyms, um, uh, and then that that you force more in the use of coercion. Um, like those are basically um, and basically that you're committed to uh, you know building a free future um, because if we don't you know don't take don't take action now um, then. Uh, we gotta give people options, ways out of the survival society. So, um, yeah, it's a good question, valid. Um, I would, yeah, I would say it's it's a, uh, it's not a, yeah, it's, it's not a coercive government per se. Yeah, first well, one in history. And I, I, I imagine it's more so a contract that people agree to that come to be a part of your your entity. <clears throat> and it's not even. I mean, it's not even really a contract. It's. I mean, it's it's just a. It's more of like a. Uh, um, I guess it's more of a prop per se. Um, it's there, there's not people aren't agreeing to anything. They're just agreeing not to coerce people. Um, that's basically so. It's it's very much a negative, um, you know, ne negative negative rights oriented, um, non legally binding document. Definitely not. But if you don't coerce people, how do you build roads? How do we? Well, that's a that is a great question, and I actually foresaw this um, at some point. So back in uh, April of this year. Actually, April of last year, um, getting my, my years mixed up, but uh, on April 20th or April, uh, yeah, April 10th of uh, 2021, I established the Pasadena Department of Transportation. And uh, in the very first uh, sub, you know, Title 33, Chapter uh, I, Subchapter A, Carriage by Pasadena Highway, uh, um, sub sub chapter A by the authority vested in absolutely no one. The Pasadena Department of Transportation is heretofore created on this date of 20 April 2021. The first order of business is to ban the use of transportation on and construction of all paved roadways in the free republic, except for the exceptions listed in sub -cha sub sub chapter B below. Roads are an ancient relic of the first realm, and such backwards thinking will not be promoted or enabled in this pocket of freedom. Um, so yeah, that's what I think about roads. They're for leftists. Roads <laughs> suck. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's your proposed mode of uh, travel? Proposed mode of travel? Um, I'm th- honestly, like, as of late, I've been thinking airships. Uh, I'm not sure how it will work out. I don't, I don't have one built yet, but, um, I mean, airships or, um, uh, I guess, uh, you know, with, uh, with 2020, there's now, uh, you know, private plane outfits, outfits that'll accept Bitcoin. So, um, I mean, private plane would probably be, um, other than car, obviously car is easiest and I don't mind, uh, I don't mind driving, but, um, yeah, there's, that's an answer. Nice. Nice. That's dope. So yeah, kind of like looking at the insanity of this, you know, past couple of years, um, because I think a lot of people have been woken up a little bit more, um, where, where do you see us trending and, and what is that like as, as the state becomes more violent and tyrannical, uh, what does that mean for anarchists and, you know, people that are seeking self-liberation? Um, I think, um, yeah, I, would, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, Ben Stone talked about in Seditions of Virgin Sabotage that like once the, the, you know, once the market demand for the state is gone, um, then, um, like that's, that's when it'll go away. Um, or when people, people realize they don't need it. And, um, I guess, uh, I don't expect, like, I don't expect, expect the servile society to be saved or the first realm. I mean, there's the, that's uh, you know, the, the way I like the way Bill Kipper put it in the 1990s that, you know, it's an open air mind control laboratory. A lot of people can't be, you know, like it's, it's, it's hard programming to break, um, you know, the, the collectivist, uh, you know, that coercive programming. Um, so I definitely don't expect like, um, don't expect the servile society to crumble um, per se, but um, I do think that it's, it's, it's shaking, um, you know, quite a few for lack of a better way to put it. It's shaking a lot of people, I guess, I guess a number of people awake that were, you know, a lot closer. And uh, I think this is probably, uh, Rayo talked in the 1960s about like, you know, a, a, an alternative economy would be great, but like, there's just not enough people. Um, like back in his day, he had, um, he, he circulation for the, the Vanu uh, zines and libertarian zines that he was, uh, I guess, editor, editor on, we're getting, you know, a few, a few hundred, uh, you know, individuals in circulation. But now I do think there's, um, there's a real great possibility. There's a real great possibility. People are going getting towards self-sufficiency. They're realizing, um, you know, that, uh, that health doesn't come from Babylon pharmaceuticals. And, uh, um, you know, people are looking for solutions. So, um, I guess I, I was, re- I guess really, I'm, I'm really, I guess, blessed in a way that I, I got focused on solutions back in, you know, the end of 2015. Cause I've been, I've been kind of waiting for, I've been kind of waiting for, I guess, w- getting, I guess, getting closer and closer to, to, to where I am now, but it just, uh, it took some time in 2020, just basically, um, solidified, um, what I'd already been kind of, I guess, intuitively, go- intuitively going towards. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, the servile society can't necessarily be saved, but, uh, there's definitely some, uh, I, and I'd even go like, a, it's, there's the, yeah, the real human beings are, 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 you know, are, are being shaken awake and, uh, you know, they're, um, looking for solutions. So I think it's, 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 uh, um, and more of a micro sense, uh, I think, uh, I think, you know, second realm network, um, alternative economies are, are look, look really, really positive, but, um, yeah, yeah, there's the answer. Nice. Yeah. That I, th- I think that definitely overlaps a lot with with what we talk about, like especially the idea of, you know, it's like we're not trying to redeem and fix the existing system and all that kind of stuff. Like we're not trying to, you know, make banking better or any bullshit like that. But we're mm-hmm. building entire entirely parallel societies and, and systems and things like that that people are totally free to opt into or or not. They can keep doing what they're doing too. Yeah, we're not trying to make the roads better. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that, and that is the, I mean, and, and I mean, and you know, that's, you know, Satoshi didn't go and, uh, you know, write a letter to his congressman. He, you know, he put out the, the Bitcoin protocol and he didn't, he, he didn't ask for permission. He, you know, he, she, they, whatever it is, uh, didn't ask for permission. They just did it. And uh, that's, you know, very much, you know, the spirit of direct action. Um, don't ask for, don't ask for permission from those who falsely imagine themselves to be your rulers. Um, just, uh, you know, Freedom's not granted. It's, it's, uh, it's earned. So, yeah. So, yeah, I like that a lot. So, yeah, you refer to like the general population as the servitile society and we, uh, just refer to them as fucking lemmings on the show. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's not inaccurate say that um <laughs> yeah and the Sur- servile society was uh was uh, a term that rayo rayo called it he also called it that society which is a little nicer 
Um, there's also the first realm, which um, in psych realm terminology, the, the first realm is the state of servile society. It's, it's they're synonymous terms, servile society in the first realm. But um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty accurate. Ever, ever since I came across it, it's like, yeah, that's, that's the perfect descriptor. Um, it's just short and right to the point. Yeah. No, I thought that was great. I thought that was great. A hundred percent. What do you, what do you think it takes for people to wake up out of this? This is something that we've kind of talked back and forth on. Hmm. What do I think it'll take? I mean, I think probably just more, um, it's, uh, who did I, I can't remember. There was a, uh, we did a direct action series on Libertarian Attack, Liberty Attack Radio. And um, every, at the end of the, and at the end of the interview, I asked, uh, you know, each interviewee, you know, like what's the best strategy for storing Liberty. And um, I, I can't remember who was it. I, I can't remember the individual, but it's, it's, you know, like, uh, oh, it was, I think it was uh, Lucander Fien. Um, you know, like grow the state because, like, um, how do how how do how are more anarchists created? Well, because they get the state becomes so intolerable that they you know reject it. Um, so that's I guess that's uh, that's a not very that's not a great answer. Um, but uh, I mean, I I. I I don't know. I've never really been in the, in the business of trying, trying to wake people up. I mean, I, I started LUA back in February of 2015. And, um, I mean, I was a, I was a an anti-political, um, constitutionalist at the time. Um, and, uh, I was pretty far, um, pretty, pretty far out there anyway. Um, as far as, um, as far as, um, as far as philosophy, but, um, then I came across anarchism pretty soon after got into Austrian economics, free market economics, and then, um, and then, yeah, really, really heavy into solutions. Um, and yeah, I never, I never missed my words. Um, I, you know, went after, you know, like anti-libertarian libertarian party went, did a number of articles and, and, and episodes on, on that, because I think it's really, really cruel when people are sick of politics to give them a third party that has never accomplished anything. It's like a really, really shitty thing to do to, to like someone that is, you know, looking for solutions. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 uh, I've never really, um, never really tried to, to wake people up or reach a lot of people. It's basically there, there are other podcasters that do a better, that could do a better job of that. Um, and I think my, my niche and, and what I, um, you know, what my life now is, is just, is, is self liberation, the action point. Once people get to, you know, that place where they're like, okay, yeah, the state is intolerable. I can't be a part of that society anymore. Where are the solutions at? And it's like, here's, you know, six years of material go, you know, start looking, there's like a thousand solutions for you. Um, and then, you know, some 20 something lifestyle changes. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a good question, a valid one. And I've never had an answer for it. I, I don't know if it's, uh, um, I guess, like I said a moment ago, you know, like Bill Cooper called the open air mind control laboratory in 1990 and it's only gotten worse with, you know, smartphones and, um, and you know, just the, I guess, just the, the collapsing of, I guess, anything outside of, um, People aren't people. Aren't, people are are only on like the, the centralized social media platforms. They're not going to see, like they're not going to see like ninety five percent of you know like what else is going on. So um, it it takes people like they they have to get to that point and then start seeking. Um, they have to start looking themselves. Um, and uh, yeah, that's not it's not a great answer, but um, it's it's not a great answer. But I I, I don't yeah, I don't think I don't think you can reach a, a whole lot of reach a lot of folks. I think they'll just they'll come they'll find the information if they if they're looking for it. I mean, for, for what it's worth, I would hundred percent agree with that. Like that's something we've talked about on the show a lot is that it's like my working assumption is that the mob is, you know, and I would define it as 80, 90% of the population, maybe more is, you know, either totally incapable or totally unwilling to like in, engage with reality critically and, you know, kind of take the kind of steps that we're talking about and be sovereign and be free and, you know, not just Bitcoin, but outside of that. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely, I, I, try, I try to concern myself with them as, as, as little as possible and focus on um, the, the people that are aligned with, with what we're, we're interested in trying to do for sure. Yeah, yeah and, and you think about it, I, and I mean, I have sympathy for him now. I have sympathy for him too, because like uh, um, some of the conclusions that you have to come to looking at Servile Society right now, um, mean that you have to reassess a lot of what you've been doing your entire life and what you've been, you know, building and, you know, what system you've been building. And I mean, I can't even, you know, like people who are, you know, 50, 60 years old who, you know, you're about to retire, work their entire life for the, for the system. And, um, like what's transpiring now, it's like, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it'd, it'd be a lot to come to terms with for sure. 
And, um, you know, like, and I guess that's where, you know, the, uh, um, you know, those, those very rare, rare opportunities, like maybe enough people will start to actually critically examine, um, you know, look in the mirror at like, at, you know, like uh, what's, you know, what, what are they putting their generative force of creation towards? What, what are they putting their energy into? Are they, are they put, putting that into a system of coercion? Are they putting it into a system that they can like, uh, or an unsystem, maybe even to put it a better way, um, you know, like a, a second realm or, you know, voluntary, voluntary society. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's very, um, there's a lot of hurdles to overcome, um, and that, and, and, uh, it's <clears throat> none of them easy, uh, none mm-hmm. of them easy. And, uh, I mean, obviously just, you, know, you hope that people start to take, cause I mean, that's, that's what I, I kind of had this, this realization again today, but like, it's, I, I think some people aren't even like take it, like some people aren't even really worried about like the, the so-called, you know, what's so-called health emergency. Um, but like this entire thing is just an excuse to like shirk responsibility, it seems. Um, and that's unfortunate. Um, but again, I, 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 you know, hopefully there's, there's other folks that are using it as an opportunity to, to start taking responsibility and, you know, hopefully maybe that first step getting, getting that, getting their, uh, um, their finances out of, you know, out of, uh, you know, the big banks and, uh, um, those sorts of institutions and put them into, into Bitcoin, um, or, you know, silver is fine too. If you diversify all that good stuff, but not, not into, not into shit coins, um, just, just, uh, other, other things, but, um, yeah. Silver is good for Bitcoin miner heat sinks. That's where it's at. Skeef, did you see Lurk's comment? Yeah. Treat them like tree. I was going to bring that up. So it's, there's a, an idea we've talked about on here too is just this idea it originates with i think probably michael malice maybe somebody else but it's just basically this idea that like all these people that we're talking about you know like what you would call members of the servile society something like that that they are as relevant to everything that we're doing as trees and it's like that's you know to me like that's the silver lining is it's like you know who's who's going to say oh we can't be free we can't have this we can't accomplish this because there's so many trees around like it makes no sense whatsoever. And the idea is that it's logically the same to say, oh, there's this giant mob of, you know, there's this unthinking mass, blah, blah, you know, all these different terms, lemmings, whatever we want to call them. And it's like, oh, we can't have a free society because of them. And, you know, the idea that we've talked about here is that those are, those are both equally incoherent because it's like, you know, a very, very small minority of any population is who, is who, sets, the, is who sets the paradigm. And then it's like everybody else sort of falls into that or they don't. Um, and yeah, it's to me, to me, it's incredibly empowering. And it's like, and I don't have, you know, and I, like you're talking about earlier, like, like reaching these people, like I'm having these conversations all the time. Like if I, if I think somebody's remotely receptive, like we're talking about, you know, the most dangerous superstition, like we're talking about all these different ideas. We're talking about Bitcoin, we're, you know, because it's like, I want as many people as possible to, exit that nonsense and be just a little bit more free for sure. Right. Right. And, and there's, and there's, it's definitely, I mean, maybe, maybe what's transpiring is just making, I guess the folks that have thought this way for a long time, more vocal, or maybe there really are more folks, but I know, um, last year there were like, so I, I've been doing this since, since February of 2015 and I knew nobody, um, that was, you know, talking about these things. Like I tried, like, that's why I use my, that's why I came out, um, w- with the radio show with my given name was cause I was going to high level indoctrination college. And, uh, I was hoping to find people locally. And, uh, there was, I, I really, it was pretty much all digital and all digital versus, um, or other than going to like the Midwest peace Liberty fest every year and then some other freedom festivals. Um, but, uh, but yeah, last year, um, within the span of like two weeks, I had like three or four really, really incredible conversations, uh, went down to the, the local spring and this guy was, um, I was, I went down there with an anarchist who was visiting and, and we, you know, we, we weren't, we don't just like, we'll be not wait, we're nice to talk to people But this, this old, this old man was like, you know, I'm getting closer to an anarchist. I'm like, I'm pretty much an anarchist now. Like this stuff's getting out of control. And it's like, yeah, welcome aboard, buddy. Um, or maybe he's, he thought about that for a long time. And then there was, there was an encounter at a, at a, at a grocery store. I was getting a few groceries and this guy walked up to me and it was, it was like even beyond anarchy too, like into some of the, uh, I guess some of the, uh, I'll put it, uh, some of the, uh, liberation spirituality stuff that I, that I've started to dig into on the Bonnie podcast. He, this guy walked up to me and just started talking to me and, um, the, it, it was even, even I guess, uh, stuff even, you know, deeper than just anarchism. So like there've been some really interesting, um, conversations, 
um, as of late. So yeah, I, I'm with you. It's, it's, uh, I, I don't know if it's just that more people, people being more vocal, um, or if, or there's actually, you know, um, actually more folks coming around. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'd be interested, what kind of intro do you usually give to like that idea of liber, liber, uh, liberation spirituality, like that you had mentioned, I've heard, heard about that from a few different angles, but yeah, I think probably a lot of people would be, un, would be unfamiliar with that term. Yeah. And that was just a, a term I, I pulled off the off, pulled off the top of my head right there, but basically um, it's uh, so there's, there's physical um, there's mental and then there's kind of the spiritual liberation angle. And so I've been digging more into kind of the mental and the, the spiritual angle. And I guess the, the premise is that, um, you know, we live in an electric universe and um, you know, our thoughts and emotions are magnetic. So like, I, I know early on, like if I was in a shitty attitude, I would attract, you know, shitty people and I would, you know, extract, attract shitty experiences. And um, I realized that, um, you know, when you, um, even just a, like a neutral, um, like a neutral, you know, mood, um, you can, you bring in a lot more, um, you bring in a lot more, I guess, uh, um, a lot more positive experiences and, you know, and, and things. So that, that might be a bad way of putting it, but, um, that's, that's kind of the, 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 the premise, the, the premise towards it. Um, and, uh, then, yeah, this, this similar, more, I guess, uh, um, more physics and, and science, science discussions go along with it. And that's, that's, that's the, that's the angle that I, that I, that I got to that on was, um, looking for a, a cure to my so-called type one diabetes. And uh, I got into um, like breathing, um, like a, breathing is something people do wrong, like on a daily basis. Um, like a lot of people are mouth breathers. Um, you're supposed to breathe, you know, like in through your nose. So I've been breathing wrong for like 26 years of my life. Um, and I noticed that was a, pr- a really, really major thing. Um, and, you know, um, you look into like Eastern traditions, like Ayurveda and nutritional Chinese medicine. And, and that's, uh, um, they had, you know, they had, they knew the importance of just, just, you know, just breathing, for example, like hold it chi or life force energy. Um, and some of these are, you know, woo woo kind of topics, but, um, I've, I've, uh, you know, started to utilize them and, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've had success with them and, uh, you know, a lot of things are, you know, or a lot of things are going, you know, really well. Um, and it could be unrelated of course, but, but still, I, I, the improving my health, um, breathing has been a big, a big, a big improvement to, um, to my overall health and, um, my mental clarity focus, and to, you know, my drive to, you know, to actually be able to achieve this, you know, achieve building the second realm. Um, it's, it's helping to make it a lot easier. I know I, 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 I drank pretty heavily up until a few years ago and, you know, while I got a lot of shit done and, you know, just did a lot, you know, I did two, two shows a week for, um, for some of that. And, uh, you know, high level indoctrination, I had, you know, nine to five job and all. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I've definitely noticed, uh, I've definitely noticed a big improvement. And I guess another way to put it is, um, bringing my, bringing my actions, like my, bringing my actions, my, my thoughts and my emotions in, in line with my principles, which are basically natural law. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've noticed that yeah, the, the more I've done that, the more things have just worked out and it takes a lot less fighting, a lot less effort. And, um, yeah, that's, I guess that's kind of the, just off the top of my head, how I would explain, awesome. um, uh, explain that avenue. And if people are interested, I, I did, uh, there was an episode, a recent episode of the Bonnie podcast was, was, uh, um, Spagyrix and, uh, Spagyrix, um, the sky clock and self-liberation with a guy named Phoenix Aurelius. He's this really badass. like, uh, he's, he's an alchemist. So he makes, uh, he makes a lot of like medic- medicinal, like really powerful medicinal, t- medicinal, you know, products of, of all styles. And, uh, he, uh, he's very, very knowledgeable on health, obviously. Um, he's, a, he's, uh, he's, he does smithing. So he had like swords that he made in the background. Um, he's, uh, so he's just a badass dude. Um, and, uh, um, he, he, he's very much into, you know, a lot of that astrology, I guess, uh, sidereal astrology type stuff, um, and applies it to, it's called biodynamic, biodynamic farming. Um, if you, um, planting at certain times of the year, um, harvesting at certain times of the year, um, you know, according to the sky clock, you know, what's, what's going on up there. Um, it's, you know, scientifically demonstrable. It has been for like a hundred plus years. I mean, it's, it's, it's even, um, you know, in a lot of farmers, farmers almanacs, um, that sort of stuff. And that's what it's based on. So, um, like there's a lot of like an overlapping of really interesting ideas. Um, and, and I think, uh, that's one of the main problems of the survival society is that it's so compartmentalized. People have, you know, like one specialty or one skill when, um, you know, and, and I guess in, in my viewpoint, um, yeah, a lot of these things, you know, a lot of these things over, you know, overlap so drastically. Like if you're trying to improve your gut health, you could like, you can relate that to the soil, improving the soil health, same sort of, you know, uh, bacteria, microorganisms, um, all of that. So like, it's all, um, it all ties in, even if it does sound, you know, like a woo woo and kind of the spirituality type stuff. Like it's, um, I only use it, utilize it if it's, if it's, uh, if I can see demonstrable, you know, evidence and results. And, um, there's a lot of really, really incredible stuff out there that I wouldn't have that the survival side turns you away from 
I want you to be in fear. They want you to be um, busy, so busy you can't even think. Um, they want you to be, you know, um, intoxicated all the time so you can't think. Again, like, um, <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah, I guess that's, I, I, I lost yeah. my train of thought, but that's the, that's the, what I, the short introduction to it, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah, we can hang with Wu Wu. My girlfriend's a, a, a acupuncturist. She just hooked me up with some herbs because uh, I'm a little bit sick. And then ski force chacos. So <laughs> we both That's like true. Right on. Okay. We both like Kirtan like, music. Oh yeah, probably yeah. That's I, uh, that that came up randomly. Like when I'm working, uh, I'm a software developer by background. So when I'm working, probably. 80, 90% of the music I listen to is Hare Krishna music. Love those guys. That's so funny. I listen to metal when I'm working. Same, metal. <laughs> metal and classical music. They're like the same thing to me. Lurk, Lurk has a good comment too. He said, I think one thing that's helped me this past year is finding finding your routine. It's my two sats. But getting into the routine. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the breathing. Yeah, I can dig that. The breathing aspect is super interesting. That isn't discussed. I used to work in um, drug rehabilitation. That's something that we taught quite a bit. Was you know basic breathing practices, and there's some pretty good science to that. As far as um, I mean, you know, there's all these things that are like kind of, kind of common knowledge. Like sitting all day in a chair gives you bad posture. Um, <laughs> eating like shit gives you you know type two diabetes and makes you fat. You know. And yet they're just kind of like the common trends and, we, you know, very few people seek to address them in a meaningful way. Um, but once you get down, you know, once you research a little bit and like one of the things you said is like, it was kind of interesting is the servitile society wants us intoxicated and busy so that we can't think and you can't really focus on things like that if you're, you know, always kind of just going through the motions. So pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I, it took, <clears throat> I was never into, I was very much kind of like the rational atheist kind of, that's, that's why I was, you know, four years ago or so, but I moved out here on the homestead and it's in the middle of nowhere. It's just, it's, it's, you know, incredible. Like being like living out here, I was by myself here for a year and it was still just incredible. And I, I had been intentionally, um, you know, reducing my, reducing what I've been taking on because I want to have time to think. Like I, I thought that was an important thing to be able to do it. So at some point was just, you know, have some time to think and relax and, and, and I could do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely credit, um, I definitely credit that. I mean, um, as that takes, uh, you think about, you know, 20 something years of programming and, um, you know, going through government, going government indoctrination camps and, and all of that. Um, and all of the, all of the, the media that I consumed, you know, there's a lot of, uh, and, and then also just to like, uh, um, you know, kind of getting into the, the woo woo type pop topics too, just stuff that's bad, bad habits and behaviors that have, or pa have been passed down, you know, generation, gener generationally that, you know, like I picked up from my parents that I had never just unconsciously never realized that I was doing. So like, you don't like you, you would never notice that if you didn't have the time to you like really, really unpack, you know, um, all that shit. So, um, yeah. And then breathing like, uh, and, and this, you know, you know, lends credit, lends more credibility to the, the scam that is Babylon Pharmaceuticals, but like, like, like uh, high blood pressure drugs, like you can lower your blood pressure. Like you can, you can control a lot of your, um, you can control quite a bit of your body with breathing. Um, and it's just like that simple of a solution. It's, it's crazy. Um, it's crazy. But then again, like the, the solutions really aren't that complicated. It's, you know, don't poison yourself and fix nutritional deficiencies and you're probably going to be all right. And, uh, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of liberation, just, uh, you know, I guess, uh, yeah, it's, it's really not, it's, it's really not hard. Just one, one step, one small step at a time. Like it doesn't have to be a lot. A lot of people think that like, um, if they want to, if they want to, uh, you know, be, if they want to you know, live on a sailboard, if they want to own, go, you know, have an off grid homestead, it's not like you can't, you don't do anything. You don't not do anything up until you get to that point. Like you take step towards liberation every single day. And then you look back over the span of like 10 years and it's like, wow, five years ago, I didn't actually realize that I was making any progress. You know, you're going through the day to day that kind of, you know, um, that the day-to-day -day grind and it doesn't seem like, you know, you're getting anywhere, but, um, it's really just, you know, one, you know, one, one thing, at, you know, one thing at a time, one, one day at a time and, uh, just try to, um, cut your ties to the survival society as much as you can and, um, put you in, in a much, much, you know, much better position. Um, and I think, you know, f financial is, is really, really one of the, 
most important. We started out season two of the Bonnie podcast with it. And I mean, you look at the survival society now, like that's, it's not necessarily, you know, government coercion. That's the problem here. It's a lot of the, um, obviously that's, that's obviously plenty, plenty of the problem, but it's the fact that most people have one source, one single source of income, um, that they're totally dependent on. And if they lose that job, they can't provide for the family. They can't pay for a house. Um, they can't live. So like whatever that job tells them that they, that they have, they need to do to be employed there. Like they're probably going to go along with it because what other choices do they, what do they, what other choices do they have? Well, they have choices, but they just don't know that they don't know about them. So, um, or a lot of them don't. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's never a better time to to work on that financial independence. And um, I mean, Bitcoin's pretty cheap now, right? It's cheaper than 100K Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. And that that point about people's income is super, super crucial. I mean, it's, that's, that's something else we've talked about before. And it's like, you know, especially within the Bitcoin space, you know, it's like we all see this, go, we're headed towards central bank digital currencies and like all this crazy stuff. And so it's like right now they have so much control because they control your income. You know, if you work for some big giant megacorp, they could say, take the vax, you know, do this, bend over, all that kind of stuff. And you're like, well, fuck, you know, if, if my kids want to go to school, you know, I need to do this, you know, whatever. Um, and then it's like, they, you know, without Bitcoin, they'll be able to ramp that up so much more with, okay, on top of that, uh, we can also instantly and very easily freeze all of your funds. Or we can, you know, if we see a, if we see a transaction go through, it's like, oh, you, you subscribed to, you know, to Shane's website, like that's a banned, that's a banned transaction. So now you have this, these implications or whatever. And it's just like all that monitoring, all that control. And, you know, it's one of the, one of the, honestly, that's, that aspect of it is, is so much more important to me with Bitcoin, you know, than, than price or, you know, getting rich or, or whatever is that technology, that tool to for for people to opt out at scale because it's like individuals can opt out today um you know lots of individuals have i you know i know people that live off in the middle of nowhere in arizona and you know haven't even looked at a tax return in 35 years um and so individuals absolutely can but when we talk about doing it at scale i think i think bitcoin and and things like that and and taking these steps like having sovereignty over your food supply like what you've done like all those kinds of things i think are just super super crucial yeah yeah well we're about 40 minutes in um i think i should play the ads real quick let's see our first sponsor tonight is dirtbags bar which is like the garden of eden of tucson very rarely can you find a place full of such sick people ready to ruin their lives with poor relationship decisions. As you know, all poor relationship decisions should be made while heavily intoxicated. We know it's hard for you to find someone new after your third or fourth marriage. At Dirtbags Bar, you can find a rebound in no time. Meet your next ex-wife at Dirtbags Bar in Tucson, Arizona. Over the last two years, things have gotten really tough for our local businesses as inflation and lockdowns and all the other nonsense has, has hit them. Business owners are dealing with increased input costs, labor shortages, all sorts of other things that are making it incredibly difficult. And many business owners out there are wondering if they're even going to be able to keep their doors open. That is why I am glad to say we are partnering with Glassnode. There's absolutely no reason why your local business owner who's been dealing with tough economic times shouldn't become a God-level trader like Will Clemente or British Hoddle. Instead of having to go to your favorite scam technical analysis YouTube channel to get a little bit of hopium, business owners can directly inject the hopium into their arm as they're looking at charts and drawing lines. They definitely won't get rich, but at least they'll have clout as they post the screenshots on Twitter. Make sure to use promo code PUREHOPIUM to get 5% off. Now let's get back to the show. No third sponsor tonight. I f was feeling a little bit rushed. Had a busy weekend, but yeah. <laughs> good, good. Those are good. Uh, one tiny little side note, a uh, relative of mine that has listened to the show before was in town this weekend. And we're just, at one point we we're driving down Speedway and they go, Hey, that's their big bar from the show. <laughs> I said, yeah, it's a real place. <laughs> we drove right by it. Oh, it's a real place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, 
the the it's the kind of inside joke is there's a, a telegram group called dirtbags that tucson and i are both in and a whole bunch of other people and so i forget how exactly it started but long story short uh i had a friend in college who every single weekend he'd go to a frat party and every single weekend he'd say all right tonight's the night gonna meet my future ex-wife tonight and so that became the the tagline that we made up for our fake sponsor which is dirtbags bars where you can meet your future ex-wife yeah uh, <laughs> other sponsors we've had on the show are uh pfizer uh the world economic forum um my uh political relook or re-education program where we we take politicians and we have them scrub toilets and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. Teach them about actually valuable skill set versus what they're used to. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think I got an idea for next week. It's, it, it's going to be the sponsor will be like a for politicians, but instead of talking about how much they drank, they'll just like brag about how many people they killed. <laughs> yeah. How many, how That's many? something like kind of going back to what you were talking about earlier about like you know Satoshi didn't write a letter to his congressman. That's something that we encounter a lot is people that say it's like oh the way that we support liberty or dance Bitcoin or whatever is by getting nice words written on paper by sociopaths. And yeah, needless to say, we uh, we disagree with that perspective. And it's like like Ted Cruz was a recent one. He he had some series of comments that were positive towards Bitcoin mining. And so just tons and tons of people in the Bitcoin space were saying, oh, Ted Cruz is awesome. He's saying all this great stuff. Like, look, he's so nice. Like, this is great. And it's like, this guy's directly complicit in murdering children for being on the wrong side of an imaginary line. Like, this is not, like, <laughs> this is not. Uh, isn't, isn't his wife Goldman Sachs too? Or is that a different, I think, I think his wife Probably. Sachs. Yeah, I, I definitely don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like, they're all just so fucked. But yeah. Free men don't and, and family. Free men don't simp, and they definitely don't simp for politicians. Yes. <laughs> but if you're a total cuck, go ahead. Call your local politician. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, we've got, got a list to talk about. So um, I think so. The, the big topic of discussion is strike. So um, I'll kind of start on, on this, and uh, I think you guys will jive with what I have to say about it. So. Um, Strike uh, set up in Argentina, and I guess this may be a thing for them in El Salvador, but pretty much uh, they can't partner with the banks in those countries, or specifically Argentina. And so what they're doing is they're using Tether on Ethereum uh, to present a cash balance to the people holding it there. Um, and I think that has to do with like some of the capital controls in Argentina and just compliance issues. Um, you know, which, you know, people there don't want to hold the Argentine peso. But, you know, my thoughts on this, so, like, there's there's kind of an uproar around um, uh, Tether um, and Ethereum, you know, being integrated into Strike in, in some way. And, you know, all I've got to say about this is, like, this is what you get from KYC's services, like... I, I'm not going to like hate on strike super hard, but you know, anytime you go and you like the point of Bitcoin is routing around this nonsense. It's around not uh, putting your driver's license in to get access to services, not being subjected to surveillance. It, it, it's about none of that. And so, you know, the whole uproar about it, it's just like, we, you have the ability to just completely route around it. Like people in Argentina have always, you know, since Bitcoin launch have been able to receive Bitcoin and they've been able to send it to anyone anywhere in the world. And I get the argument for like fiat on and off ramps, but I, I'm just not a big fan of them anymore. <laughs> like I, I'm yeah. kind of over it. So that's my thoughts. Yeah, I haven't I haven't had a chance to look into this strike tether thing specifically, but um, yeah, it's they're 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 always going to be compromised to a large extent, and it's like all of these, in my opinion, all of these companies are stopgap solutions in between, you know, at best, in between now and when you can just buy shit on Lightning, whatever you want, or whatever, maybe something else, uh, it'll be something other than Lightning, or maybe it'll be something with Lightning, or maybe it'll be a dozen different things. But it's like, until the mechanisms are in place to 
to exchange Bitcoin more widely because it's very easy and very possible today. But it's, yeah, you know, like I go to, you know, as I've talked about on here, I go to the farmer's market at least once a week and that's where I get as much of my groceries as humanly possible. And, you know, that, that world is still all cash, you know, which is, you know, which is obviously better than credit cards for sure. Um, Cause I'm assuming and hoping that, that they uh, are, are careful about what, what information they disclose to the state regarding that transaction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like the playbook going into this year, like it, if for the people that are aware and actually give a shit about liberty and freedom, there's a war on cash. Cash is getting taken away and they're trying to replace yeah. it with surveillance and they're already surveilling us a shit ton. And so like the whole... You know, I think it's time to like start taking non KYC Bitcoin seriously. And you know, yeah. if if you have the ability to be, you know, to talk to people and like meet people and build trust, then you have the ability to buy Bitcoin. And if you have the if you have electricity in your house, you have the ability to mine Bitcoin. So, and if you have the ability to do anything productive, you have the ability to earn Bitcoin. So, yeah. And I yeah, think that's that's, like that's, what was, and that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Earn it. That's it's the best way to get it. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say like like a textbook example of kind of how how they sort of backdoor limits on these things. It's like you can look at, you know, the, they always do these limits of you know, it's like like I, what there was the the transaction of, you know, they said we're not gonna monitor any transactions below ten thousand dollars, but that rule was written in, you know, nineteen sixty five or whatever. Like something I could see them doing with cash is they'll say, hey, look, nobody needs more than $5,000 worth of cash. What are you, a drug dealer? You know, no, you can't withdraw more than $5,000. It's, it's illegal or whatever, um, you know, and then just fucking inflate the shit out of everything like they are already and watch that go down. And then it's like, well, you know, I know we said it was 5000 but it's actually 2000 and inflation's been 20% a year for the last three. You know, it's like you can quickly see how they... Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, no, we don't, we didn't outlaw cash. Like you can get cash, you can get thousands and thousands of dollars, you know? And then, but it's like in reality, you know, it's, it's like a lot of, you know, they've, they've played similar games with like ammunition and, you know, making it difficult to import and find supplies and blah, blah, blah. Like they're, they can be very sneaky is my, I think is my point. <laughs> yeah. They, they definitely don't have... And this kind of goes back to like why it's stupid to lobby your politician. It's just they don't have your best interest in mind. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They want to actively coerce you and enslave you. So fuck them. Yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting because, uh, you know, like the obviously, um, salt you've seen over the past couple of years, the CBDC stuff, uh, discussed. <clears throat> and obviously, you know, internet's freaking out about it, which makes, I mean, makes sense. It's not, not a good thing, of course. Um, but like I look at like, the, you know, pl- the place, you know, where I, where I work, um, you know, half hour away from here, it's a small town. I mean, they still use checks for, for fuck's sakes. Um, so like I, they aren't going to be onboarded to a central bank digital currency unless it's by like swiping a debit card, which they already probably do. Um, and really like, does it, does it have to be as, it, it, and that doesn't even necessarily like, it doesn't like the, you know, the surveillance is already here, right? The surveillance, the control it's, you know, with the, with, you know, with the debit and the credit card. So, mm-hmm. um, I mean, yeah, it's an additional step of control for sure, but like they already have, they've, they've already had a lot of controls like that. Um, you know, um, and in the meantime, it's like, I, I interviewed smuggler right after, I guess it was pretty soon after, um, you know, the, the so-called health emergency and, uh, you know, he's, he was disappointed, uh, and I'm going to probably gonna badly paraphrase, but he was disappointed in a lot of, you know, libertarians, anarchists online who are freaking out saying, like, this is like, this is, you know, this is terrible. It's, 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 um, it is, but like, look, look at everything, like, look at everything else. Like it's been bad for, um, like it's been bad for a long time. Like this isn't like that big of a stretch. Um, so, you know, just business as usual for those, for, for, for a lot of folks like, like myself and him. So, um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting. I mean. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting. Um, I mean, things are going digital, and and you you made a lot of yeah a lot of good points about uh, um, the war on cash, um, definitely. But uh, you know, and and uh, you know the second realm parallel economy. Um, you know, Bitcoin's obviously great, and uh, you know they're you know barter too. Barter's uh, barter's an incredible um, thing we need to get. I think needs to be used a lot more. Yeah, that's good. And and the point of it being bad for a long time is you know a huge point. Um, 
because I, I, I think a lot the of federal, the federal reserve has been here for like 109 years or yes. however, yeah, however long, long time. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but no, yeah but, and it's know. like as recently as like, like, I mean, Vietnam, Iraq, you know, it's like, just go all the way down and it's like the income tax like what they've done with income tax with regulation with all just, yeah, it's that's, that's, I co-sign everything you were saying. And it's just, that's it's definitely a point of frustration is is you have a lot of people and i you know i predominantly find them among like you know people who are roughly trump supporters or something like that is these people who they're like they're like things just got bad or it's like or it's a lot it's very i think it's very common in the general sort of conservative mindset is that there's been this some fundamental shift in the last you know what five ten years but it's like even if they're even if they glorify the 1950s, they still think there was this fundamental shift. Like it was like everything was amazing and leave it to Beaver and now it sucks. So it went bad sometime in between then. It's like you're saying, it's like we had there the Federal Reserve in 1913. Like we like go back, like go back through the history. Had, like had the rat had the had a ratification of the 1787 Federal Constitution, 1787. That was a pretty bad moment for freedom. Um, exactly. I mean, yeah, we how far, like how far, yeah, where are you gonna go back? Um <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And it's just amazing, like talking about I would I would hope that everybody that listens to this show self custodies. And I imagine that most people do, but just how how much of a powerful tool that is, because you know, talking about how things have been bad for a while, the majority of people have all of their wealth stored and reliant or reliant on third party intermediaries to hold it for them, whether it's their retirement or you know, their checking banking account. And they didn't, they didn't never take full custody of it. And just the level of vulnerability that that leaves people in is unbelievable to me. Yeah. And it's like that idea of, you know, obviously self custody. And then on top of that, it's like having, having our wealth secured in, in, in cold storage and, you know, and being outside of, you know, it's like, because they can, you know, like all these different entities can do all sorts of, you know, crazy games with like swinging the Bitcoin price and short selling and all this crazy stuff. And if a person can say, you know, no, most of my wealth is just sitting there and it's not going to move for a decade or two. And it's just, it's just parked. And so you want to, you want to create a, do with this and that create the price 50% tomorrow, you know, go for it. I'm playing, you know, I know, I know where this is going at the end of this decade, the end of next decade and things like that. That's, that's what I'm looking at. Whereas, you know, what I think a huge attack vector with Bitcoin is all this collateralized stuff is they want people to collateralize their Bitcoin to borrow dollars to buy whatever. And then, you know, you've taken someone from a self custodied sovereign Bitcoiner who controls their wealth to somebody who can have their wealth stolen from them by a margin call or not even stolen. Cause it's a, it's a voluntary thing, but ha- can, can lose their wealth, you know, through a margin call and all this like banker bullshit. And it's, I mean, that on top of why would you go into Bitcoin and then go back to all this Goldman Sachs horse shit and bankers and trading and leverage. And it's like, they're going to fuck you. They've been doing this for thousands of years. This is their game. It's like, until we self custody and opt out. Like, they, So you think it's a bad idea to go take out a massive loan from the bank, buy a Aston Martin, and then try and pay it off with all the Bitcoin that you put in BlockFi? The interest. I I hope I hope this really, really wild, crazy idea that uh, Bitcoin should be secured with free and open source software, uh, not 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 (laughs) banks. So I know that's pretty pretty uh pretty contentious. Yeah. Thanks. I guess I'll I'll just mention I'll mention real real briefly, <clears throat> and uh, um, you know self custody uh, obviously yeah for for sure. But um, I and I, I I would say this just in case there's a listener out there that forgot they existed because I did for a couple of years. I will admit my my fault. Um, but I forgot about Bitcoin paper wallets. Um, so I gave one to my dad for for Christmas, and he thought it was the coolest thing because I got him a um, I got him a, a hardware wallet a couple of years ago, and like it was just too complex. He wasn't gonna ever pick that up but just to give give someone an introduction to that so like uh, and get an introduction to the bitcoin network with that is i guess it's a it's a way to get people in um and one that i forgot about so maybe some of your listeners did too yeah. i don't know how much money you'd want to you'd, you'd want to put on there but um i guess that's up to the individual per se yeah 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 personally i would say like a like a like a checking account level of bitcoin i think you 
could do it because it's, it's it's essentially a bearer asset, a paper wallet. Whoever has that has access to the Bitcoin. Um, gotcha. But yeah, and there's uh, if a person has a smartphone, blue wallet, green wallet. There's a lot of you know apps that they can download. If a person doesn't have a smartphone and they just do a desktop computer, um, there's great you know. I, yeah, there's Wasabi is my favorite desktop wallet, things like that. There's a lot of good options. Hey, you could you could you could be someone's a uh, proxy merchant and uh they need to buy Bitcoin, you could just dish them uh, Bitcoin paper wallets. So if they're not technical at all, it's an interesting idea. I hadn't thought of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's really good. There's a, there's a tool called Open Dime from a company called CoinKite also. It's uh, essentially yeah. a USB stick. Um and it's similar similar concept. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I mean, and I think that's like a big responsibility and it's something I've said, I think the last couple of weeks is like, you know, I, when people come to the meetups or somebody asks me about Bitcoin, I want to sit down with them and explain to them how it works and then show them right there. Like, do you want to access non KYC Bitcoin and, and to explain that before I explain signing up for an exchange like strike? Cause like kind of going back to strike, like everybody likes to hate on Coinbase and how shitty they are. And they are pretty shitty because they partner with the feds um, and actively, you know, take a role in that. But every every intermediary, like, gatekeeping institution that is an exchange is essentially deputized by the state because they have to report and they have to do this stuff. So they're, they're kind of in the same camp as Coinbase, in my opinion. Yeah. But... Okay. Happy MLK got day today, guys. <laughs> I was happy ha- MLK day. I was happy to see a lot of Malcolm X quotes today. <laughs> Did you guys notice that? Uh, I've, I'm currently locked out of my Twitter on purpose, so I have not been on Twitter for a little while. Nice. I think I saw a few, yeah. Yeah. I made sure to tweet at our mayor. Um, it's always funny to see a politician try and uh, like use MLK for like clout when the state killed him. I, one thing I well, one thing I did see is uh, the FBI tweeted about Happy MLK Day or whatever, and <laughs> yeah. just got absolutely yeah, yeah. ratioed by uh, some guy. I, I wish I could remember. I'll, I've got the link somewhere, but it's like some guy. Who said just made a joke about how oh, it's it's kind of weird how the the murderer is uh is uh, celebrating the victim or something like that, but had had a witty way of phrasing it. Just got absolutely ratioed. <laughs> awesome. Did they delete that tweet? Because I I saw a funny tweet making fun of the FBI. Um, oh yeah, they did tweet about it. I saw a fake tweet that really cracked me up. It was from the FBI. It said just because we killed him, okay, doesn't mean we can't miss him. I thought that was pretty good. I tweeted that yeah. at our lovely mayor too. And that, I mean, and and that goes back to the point earlier. Is it's like, you know, what what were these glory days? Was it back when the FBI was assassinating civil rights activists? Was it like what? Where, where's these? Where's this beautiful time that you guys supposedly miss? You know, it's just just so many examples that it's silly. Hmm. Well, this is this is the idea of like statism, you know, at its at its core is like, you know, the, they're so detached from reality and they're okay with uh, violence as long as it's perpetrated against somebody else and not their group, you know. So you like you look at the conservatives today, and you know they've they've had a long stretch where they've not been persecuted. Um, the the FBI and the CIA was going after the leftists in the sixties and seventies, and then they went after the Muslims, and then you know, and the conservatives cheered that that on, like yeah, let's let's support the Patriot Act, and then it, it's just such a detachment for from reality, and this is like, you know, it it's it's baffling to me to watch these people get up in arms because they're like somebody's trying to force force a shot in my arm. And it's like that, that's the point where you think there's a problem. Whereas, you know, the state committing genocides against people, it's not problematic and, you know, you support it. It's like, come on. Well, and it's like, how many people can we help out, opt out just by 
living free just by living how Shane's living, just how living, how we're living, like all these different things. It's like, I, how many, you know, I, I guess I don't know if you have, but I've had conversations with people where they'll, you know, they'll bring up some, you know, X, Y, Z, terrible political issue. You know, I don't like, so like one example that we use on this, I use on, on the show a lot is it's like my, uh, my kids are homeschooled. And so, um, you know, I have no idea what the local school board is up to. Maybe they're doing critical race stuff. Maybe they're not. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no reason to care because it doesn't impact my life whatsoever. And so it's like, that's as much as possible. That's the approach that I want to take to the state is, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, start any fires, burn a building down, anything like that. I just, I just want to opt out in every way I possibly can. And I just, you know, I want my kids educated at home so that they're not, you know, having, you know, out in some Soviet indoctrination camp, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I want to use Bitcoin to get as much of my financial life as possible out of their grasp. Like that's, you know, and I, and I think we can introduce people to that, you know, they'll say, Oh, like, this obviously terrible thing and just respond with, yeah, I, I mean, is it terrible? I don't know. I haven't been following it. It doesn't really impact me. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I think it's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, that's big, man. Nice on a uh, homeschool on your children. It's awesome. Yeah. We've got a saying on this show that we stole um, from one of our good friends, optimist. Um, and we say, you can't complain if you if you vote, you only have the right to complain if you don't vote. You got any thoughts on that, Shane? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've heard, uh, I've, yeah, I've heard, heard, definitely heard that before. Um, I don't know. My, my, my opinion is obviously just that, uh, you know, I, th- I think whatever, whatever, um, whatever you put your energy and, uh, you know, generative force of creation into is your responsibility. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's, uh, I don't know. That's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I can't remember. It was one of the recent, you know, one of the recent big, you know, uh, bludgy shootings, the police shootings. And, uh, I was talking to a family member walk up to me and it's like, Oh, you paint, did you hear that, that so-and-so got off or whatever it was? And I was like, I don't pay attention to the circuit staff. Um, I don't pay attention to it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, you yeah, like, yeah, the, obviously like things are, um, uh, since since 2020 things have definitely escalated, escalated in the survival society but like um it's like i've said numerous times on podcasts like i did i couldn't tell there's anything going on like there's there's a little more like i can there's there's more compl- you know hyper compliance you know status or or just or like doing more they're they're wearing masks around now um so like it's not really anything different it's just like oh um more compliance what what else would i expect um yeah yeah i think i said they've, they've... oh good I was going to say that they've, they've become easier to identify for sure. Okay, they wear, they've got the uniform. I definitely pay attention to the circus too much. All I, one, I was, I was telling something about this recently. Like one, so I've never like, well, not never. Like I, there's a period of time, like I got a physical newspaper subscription and things like that. But like for, for quite a while I have, you know, haven't like, I haven't had a TV in my house since I was 18 years old, that kind of stuff. And, but it's like one downside of the, of the so there's tons of upsides. Like I'm very, I'm very intentional about what I focus on those kind of things, but it's like one downside is like, I don't get as much exposure. And so it's like, I was telling somebody recently, like with the Bitcoin bull run, I actually had no idea the 2017 bull run even happened. I was so like, I had played with Bitcoin in 2012 and then I didn't do shit for, with it for a very, very long time. And so it's like, I didn't even think the word Bitcoin for years and years and years. And so, you know, I came in, I read the Bitcoin standard, this kind of, this, you know, all this different stuff. And then, uh, you know, I'm re- reading about it. I'm looking at the chart and I'm like, oh, huh, I guess the price was higher recently. Interesting. Like I, had, <laughs> I, was, so, I was so out of it. So it's, there's all, so there, yeah, so I'll find stuff randomly where it's like, people, you know, like stuff that I should know about or whatever. And I just have no idea. I've never encountered it. <laughs> happens with movies all the time <laughs> so the, the way that i look at it i, I still like i i got off um it used to be that i get all my news from fascist book when i was on there but i've been on i haven't been on there for a few years um but like now like if there's anything that i need to know about like i'll see it on twitter like a thousand times probably and um then uh, you know, like someone will post about it in the pasnia committee of correspondence group or something 
Um, like I'll, it'll come across one of my, you know, one of the channels that I'm, that I'm looking at, um, uh, that I, that I follow. So, um, but yeah, not being directly, um, I have said a number of times over the past, uh, over the past year, but I don't voluntarily submit myself to propaganda anymore. Um, it's after, after, after yeah, a few years back, it's coming up on three years since I, I canceled my, my uh, Netflix subscription and, uh, basically just, you know, podcast books, videos, like, um, all that, um, or just, you know, relaxing here, you know, here at, uh, the wilderness of, uh, of Pasnia. But, uh, um, yeah, I just, uh, I, 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 yeah, I don't subject myself to, to propaganda anymore if I don't have to, like, why, why would I, like, I, <laughs> why would I? I really like that. Here's probably one of the favorite comments I've ever gotten in chat. So <clears throat> Zorn says my son made some money shoveling snow today and he wanted you to have this one sat that's pretty awesome thanks Sorenson. the power of bitcoin lightning network he just sent a tiny 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 fraction of a penny i don't know what that's one twenty three hundredth or whatever the sats per dollar is right now <laughs> or that's of a dollar so one two yeah i guess, I guess zorn's son gets a real kick out of it every time uh he sends <laughs> one sat i i get a kick out of it too but yeah, that's dope. Oh, I wonder, can we split a sat in half? Is that possible yet? Uh, don't ask John Carvalho. He'll get angry. Anyway, that's the matter. Uh, no, not currently. Yeah. That I know of. <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of... I'm thinking... My media, you know, consists of like Twitter. I I hate YouTube. Um, one thing that I did that was really positive, and it's funny, I found your show doing this, Shane, because you're probably screwed by the algorithm. Um, super hard, but uh, I downloaded a new pipe on my um, graphene phone, and it just like totally eliminates the the algorithm. So you pretty much only follow um, who you subscribe to. And I think the search results are a little bit better, but I actually haven't heard of that. Is that an F droid or what is, I think it's an F droid. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's like the, there's no ads. Um, one of the guys in our telegram group is shilling it. Um, cool. one of our telegram groups. That's, that's actually good to know. I just got, um, I just got my first, uh, ghost phone, um, this past week. Um, our buddy Jamie McConnick is, uh, he's doing some stuff. Uh, I've got the first Pazni freedom box too. Um, but, uh, first dark phone I've had, I've, I just haven't had time to do all the tinkering and, and learning that I need to do to, to set one up. But, um, I got to, um, so yeah, a pixel three, a good D Googled with uh Calix OS on it. So it's not like, nice. it's not the most, uh, it's not the most intense security one, but I, I want to just be able to pick it up and use it. So it's a, it's a really badass phone, super user friendly. Um, yeah, just, yeah, really really happy with it. Now I'm, I'm one step closer. I've had a busted ass iPhone for like two years, just waiting for the thing to die, but it won't, it refuses to. So I was like, all right, I'm, I got to take matters in my own hands. So, um, I'm, I've, I've detrained, I'm transitioning away from my, my spy phone. Um, finally, um, it's been a while, but yeah, I can definitely, can definitely recommend, um, definitely recommend the, the freedom of Android or F droid and, and, uh, Aurora app store over, I didn't realize, I, I guess I knew how trapped I was on that, on the, you know, on shitty Apple, but, um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the freedom of, the freedom of open source Android, Android operating yeah. systems, incredible. Yeah, I think, I think two, two things are here. So Calyx or Graphene on Pixel is very, very nice. Gets up, gets out all the Google nonsense. Um, and then pairing with, there's a company called Start9 that has a product called an embassy that's essentially a virtual private cert, you know, I've got one running in a closet and that can be, you know, everything that a person would use iCloud for that can be used to replace that and self-host it. Um, and they've mm -hmm. got, they're doing, I know I've had the pleasure of meeting the guys that started that, you know, that whole thing. And they've been very good people doing some cool stuff. Yeah. And what's super cool about what they're doing too, is like you, you could self host all that stuff if you wanted to run a server like you could self host next cloud, you could self host matrix, you could self host, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, for people like me that are a little less, um, 
ambitious uh, in regards to technology. It's it's very doable. But. Yeah. And the start nines made it. So, you know, the setup process is 30, 45 seconds long. And like, the, like they literally tested it with like 80 year old grandmas and stuff like that. It's, they make it very accessible, which is pretty cool. Yeah. We should get Matt Hill on here. He's a cool dude. Yeah. But yeah, kind of what you were talking about, Shane, um, earlier, as far as like, you know, bumping into anarchists, like, you started so you started in 2015 couldn't find anybody and then today you know you bump into them i, th- I think yeah. like just that idea of like the remnant is so powerful and kind of what you're talking about is like you know the, the quickest way to make anarchists is having an impressive awful state um oh zorn just started running an embassy that's dope um but lost my train of thought but yeah i mean it, it's cool that we can just like sit back and you know enjoy it. like one of the things i think i'm drawn to your work um in particular is it, it's like a very similar mission as us you know where we're not trying out there to get out there and like you know make a mon- bunch of money off of our content or you know get a, a big viewer base we're just trying to you know reach out to that remnant and create network of people and you know do similar stuff and i think that's powerful yeah definitely definitely and i've been happy to see excuse me um i've been happy to see the uh like the bitcoin citadel thing and so it's the exact same thing that we're we're basically doing um with you know our second round pasnia network but um just a different focus but a great focus <clears throat> i like it um and and yeah that's uh that's 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 the future um that's the future um is uh, i th- think going back towards the sort of, uh, um, you know, their digital tribalism and tribalism in general, um, you know, finding, finding those folks who, um, who you, who you want to interact with. Um, I think that's, that's been probably the, one of the, one of the best three, best things for my health over the past couple of years is that I just, I only deal with folks who have forced the use of coercion. So, um, you know, doing trade, I love pay, Like I love paying people in Bitcoin. It's like I had, I had Max Hillebrand on, um, Vanu a few months back and he made a, a terrific point that like, when, when I get paid in Bitcoin, like I know someone values, um, the work that I did for them. Like I know for a fact, because that's going to be worth, um, you know, you, you know, when you're in the, in the you know, U S dollars, whatever, the, the, whatever for the, for whatever that matters. But, um, it's like, that's, that's like real valuable. It's not just like handing someone a shitty, you know, a federal reserve note. Um, so, um, yeah, being, you know, being able to, um, you know, pay people, um, you know, for, for really valuable, um, you know, products and services, um, in the second realm, um, you know, like it's, it's, it's great. Um, it's, there's, there's nothing better. Yeah. That's, yeah I'm, a huge, I'm a huge fan of Max Hillbrand. I like him a lot. Yeah. Those interviews. Sure. You've had him on a couple of times and they're fantastic. <laughs> really cool dude. Yeah. Max is incredible. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Van Nomad over in Europe, um, working on, um, I'll, I'll mention Wasabi Wall cause I, we were, you were talking about strike earlier and I think, um, it's like a real, a real positive, um, point and, and I'm happy to see, you know, happy to see so much focus on in the 2.0, but the Wasabi Wall 2.0 with the coin join, um, is yeah, really, really incredible to see. And, uh, um, well, I can't remember the other, uh, and Taproot, um, you know, just there's lots of, yeah, lots of really, really great things going on in the open source space and, you know, protocol wise. As yeah. of as of late, yeah. Should we become the? I I use Samurai, um, and I have used Wasabi, but I mostly use Samurai now. But should we become the Wasabi podcast just to piss people off? Uh Car- Caro's got that kind of cover. It's yeah. Should we join the know. team it's, though? This, the well, and the the coin join wars. It's just like I don't know. Gets it so gets real stupid real quick. It's and so it's, funny. <laughs> My 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 basic contention with Samurai is if I was a you know if I was trying to design a business model that would if basically if I was a spook trying to design a business model I don't think I could beat Samurai you know that doesn't mean there's anything malicious or nefarious but if people you know anybody that uses Samurai just study very very carefully exactly what what data is being shared and how and just all the different things you can you can do with that like I think. You know, there's certain there's certainly ways to use Samurai totally privately, uh, but it is not the default path. Yeah. So, has Wasabi 2.0 launched? 
No, not yet. Okay. It's I don't think so. Two yet. weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> um, but yeah, it looks everything I've seen out of them and like Francis uh, Pulio is, you know, he's had access to it and has said, you know, has, has very good things to say about it. So I'm I'm certainly interested to to play with it once it's released. It's got a dope logo. Mm-hmm. Well, and like one one big thing that they that they have released is that it, it'll basically it's a point three percent coin join fee, and then once once you pay that, then it's like unlimited remixes after that. And there's which looks like a bunch of stuff that again I haven't had a chance to play with yet, but looks looks like it could be interesting. Yeah, so that's what Samurai does too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, once you once you start mixing, you don't continuously pay fees, so that's good. Yeah, the, the coin mixing is super interesting. I will say one thing. One thing I enjoy. The last thing I'll say about Wasabi is uh, so Francis, you know, continual. So Francis is the CEO of a company called Bull Bitcoin up in Canada. They're um, they're like about as cypherpunk as you can do an exchange. Like mm-hmm. you can only self custody. They don't custody for you. Um, huge limits on no KYC, all kinds of different stuff. Um, and so huge, huge fan of those guys. And, uh, but so he always gets, and they, they coin joint in and out everything with Wasabi. And so like the samurai people will, Wasabi sucks, it's broken, blah, 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 blah. And like one point that he makes often is he'll say, okay, you, you know that we do, we use Wasabi. We do an incredible volume on there. You've never de-anonymized a single transaction. Why? And it's like the response is always, in my opinion, copy pasting from the people that actually understand Samurai. And it's like, those, those people have really good points. Everybody else is kind of full of it. But. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's funny, like, the, the intense tribalism that goes into, you know, these different segments of Bitcoin. And I think it's inherently a good thing, you know, is it my perspective mm-hmm. on it. Because the more infight, like, and you, you can't fight collectivism with collectivism. You know, you fight collectivism with individualism and, and creating, um, all, all the infighting plays into that because, you know, why is it impossible for, you know, any sort of central authority to co op Bitcoin? It's because everybody has different agendas and aspirations and desires of what they want to do with Bitcoin. Um, so it's very difficult to reach consensus to, to radically change anything on it. Um, but it is very entertaining at the same time, you know, to see it, like people just like slinging mud and not having really thought through it. Wasabi, is Wasabi 2.0 blue or is it green? Their logo. I think it's, I think it's blue. Good. So, Red team versus green team wasn't working, so they had to go red team versus blue team. Yeah. So Shane, what what are your kind of predictions going forward as far as um, you know, the next year of of the servitile society and how how does that impact uh, people trying to limit coercion in their lives and um, escape it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what I, I what I, you know, what I would answer with um, is essentially that uh, I mean the coercion is probably not gonna. I mean um, the coercion is not gonna you know go away. It's not gonna. They're not. They're not gonna give up all the you know all the power that uh, those who falsely imagine themselves rulers have, have gained over the past uh, couple of years. Um, and uh, I mean, I personally speaking, I've been prepping for the reality that, like, like I mentioned earlier on, like if um, you know someone break you break break your arm on the property, um, like. Uh, you kind of just factor, you know, not factor in, um, not factor in, um, you know, first realm services into, or products or services into, um, what I'm doing. So basically I think, uh, um, self-sufficiency in all areas will become really important, not just in, you know, foods, a, a first one, but food's not really that hard. Um, in all honesty, um, I guess, uh, um, you know, kind of the health and wellness angle, which has been my focus over the past few years. Um, uh, I put a, I've got someone in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat putting together a, a really uh, uh, like a survival emergency kit um, for um, for those sorts of things, and uh, I think it's it's really just uh, um, becoming as as uh, self sufficient in as many areas as possible. Um, 
yeah, I guess that's, 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 that's pretty much it. Um, that's, and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's what, I, that's what I'm focusing on. And, uh, I guess I don't have anything else to add there. Yeah. The food has definitely been an issue for a little bit. Um, medical, I mean, it seems like the only answer is to start, we have to start building our own medical system essentially. Well, that's, um, or, uh, you know, like, uh, speaking, you know, bringing up traditional Chinese medicine again, um, like, uh, and, and these, some of these other, um, methodologies, some of these other methodologies, um, really, uh, you know, it's, it's educating the individual, um, on, you know, on, cause that, that's, that's, that's a big, uh, you know, having to outsource that, cr- that critical aspect of your life, like your health to some, to a third party, um, is very, very dangerous. Um, in my, I mean, in my opinion, um, it always, it, it has been, um, you know, for hundreds of hundreds of years and this isn't, it's not a new problem there either with Rockefeller medicine or allopathic medicine. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah. And I think, yeah, even, even beyond that, the, the, uh, something that's more down the road for us is, uh, you know, alternative infrastructure. Um, I mean, saw what happened and, uh, you know, might've been manipulated. I mean, most of the stuff is it's all centralized and controlled, but, um, like the, uh, you know, the decentralized control grid and, and all of the, all of the, I guess the looming threats that have been, uh, you know, um, been around that, I think just ultimate independent energy, um, will be, uh, um, will be huge. Um, uh, and that's more of a, I guess, more of a, a medium to, to long-term goal for the second realm. But I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big one. And, uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big one. Um, communications, which, um, you know, I don't think like, like text, text messages or, or don't take any data, don't take much to transmit, but, um, so as far as infrastructure for that, it might not be terrible, but, um, but yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the conveniences of the first realm are probably going to have to be foregone. Um, if you're, if you want to keep your, your, uh, your autonomy or your, uh, I guess, however you want to look at it, your soul, your spirit. Um, I mean, it's, it, it's, it would not, it's not hard to lose it. Um, lose it in the survival society. Iotogenic is a forbidden word. Yeah. Iotrogenic disease. Iotrogenic. The treatment. Yep. Where the treatment is the, the cause. Really? Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Zorn explains that. Man, I'm so lucky to have a girlfriend that's a acupuncturist. Yeah, that's a value. That's a valuable. Uh, that's valuable for sure. Yeah. No, I think that. Yeah, I I I, I just feel like as I'm talking, you know, my brain's still kind of like stuck half and half in either world, and that's something like I'd like to make a commitment to getting out of and getting into that. You know, because that, that's the problem with like freedom is like, you know, the majority of people, you know, in, in the society that we've already seen have, you know, submitted to just awful, the awfulness of it out of convenience and not necessarily coercion. It's just like, this is the, the easier, the easier path. And like, as we go into the world of CBDCs and social credit scores and stuff like that, that's going to be the same you know, reason why people choose to adopt that versus having to be locked out of the system. So, yeah, the the individual energy is super interesting because you can, you can live pretty reasonably um, off of small amounts of electricity uh, with solar panels or water turbines or, you know, things like that. If you buy like an old tractor battery or, or forklift battery or something like that, um, and string a few together. But once you start getting into, you know, like Bitcoin mining or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, nicer luxuries of like having a hot tub or a pool or, you know, whatever, it gets a little bit more difficult to do things like that. So but it's, al- it's also where stranded gas comes in. Like that's something mm-hmm. that I hadn't encountered very much prior to, you know, get- getting into Bitcoin and learning a little bit more about mining. Is it like there's these, gas wells all over the place like you know if you've ever driven through texas oklahoma wyoming all those places and seen a giant torch out in the field that is gas that could produce a tremendous amount of electricity and they essentially run it through these generators and that is something like something i've thought about is it's like i think that you know down the road once all this stuff matures so much more it's like i think people will buy things like 
a stranded gas well for the exact same reason that you know our parents or grandparents might have bought a bond with like a five or seven percent coupon is it's like this idea of like this is a very conservative bet like very low you know what you've done properly very low risk it's off the grid it's not connected to anything and it's like a reliable stable source of income for a very long period of time where it's like you know it's not anything you're going to get rich on overnight but you know just could be it's like a out totally outside of the banking system like something that fulfills a very similar function to what those kinds of financial instruments used to but it's a you know it's a gas well with a bunch of generators and, and you know bitcoin miners i've never even thought about that as an option like you probably live, you just set up an oil rig on your property and extract oil to a certain extent or or buy it specifically for that reason like i'm an you know this you know this costs x number you know uh, you know 100 million sats for this whole thing and i expect it to produce you know 5 million sats a year in profit and it's like what i effectively what i just bought is a financial instrument that gives me very long term stable income um, and because it's like your power is effectively free, you know, that's very good for, for Bitcoin mining. Um, and that's, so yeah, just as a way, as a way to, for people to get, get access to something like that, that, that previously came from, you know, some fucking banker or something like that. Yeah. And I guess that's important. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, I guess that's important. Cause like, I, I guess the perspective that I've been going from, which is a, bad perspective to have as far as self you know kind of like opting out of the system as being entirely 100 percent self-sufficient and i think that just limits me so much and I, I think i've talked about this before you know with like my ambitions to do everything myself and you know how the how important the division of labor is and networking and and seeking resources from other people instead of just beating my head against the wall, wasting a bunch of time trying to figure out something when I could just pay a little bit of money to get it done for me. So, yeah. And I think having, yeah. having people in our local communities that, you know, that run a goat farm, that like that's their source of income, that run a cow farm, you know, that run that ranch, you know, all this different kind of stuff that grow whatever vegetables or whatever. Like it, to me personally, it's extremely valuable to have those people in my community. Mm. And so, which is why, you know, I make point shop at, the farmer's market is just because it's like, I want to give them cash directly rather than having Kroger and the government take a cut. Um, and it's like, cause, cause I know like these are, these are the kinds of, you know, in general, these are the kinds of people that I want to be surrounded by, you know, they're, they're, yeah, people that are, you know, way more outside of the system than your, you know, your typical servile society member. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I guess I would say I, I do like to, um, I mean, at least I'm in this stage right now where I do want to at least know how to, I, I want to try everything that I might need to do in the future. So like a lot of the stuff I'm doing now is, um, you know, I, I am, I am, I am, I'm not outsourcing much. I'll just put it that way. Um, but I do, I mean, you talk about a second realm network, like, um, replacing all necessary institutions, um, on, upon a upon a different society with a foundation of you know volunteerism and peace and truth and, and those sorts of ideas not not the coercion of the first realm so I mean um, division of labor is still an important principle like I I mean uh, um, there's uh, uh, there's people on the network that you know want to you know do hemp farming for you know paper and, and you know clothes products um, like I, I definitely envision like uh, um, I mentioned the the, uh, the the ghost phone like Jamin Bacona handles all the, the tech stuff for Pasnia I don't have the time or the um, or the or really really the desire even um, to to do all that tinkering. So yeah, um, I mean I, I I definitely think there's there's a place for both. Um, I think it's it's really with everything is finding that balance that uh, um, where you where you're not uh, where if when you're in a liberated lifestyle and you have that time it's not really a big of a deal but still um, like you want to balance you want to you want to make sure it's uh, um, you know you you balance your time so you enjoy what you're doing um, and not just you know take on thirty thousand projects at once and then real you know and then just basically bust your ass all the time and yeah work's important you know getting getting stuff done but like I said I, I um, when I moved here I I intentionally like reduced the amount of stuff that I was that I was taking on to to have time to relax and think and, and, and things like that. And that used to be a very important part of human of human life, you know, sitting by a, sitting by a um, a river and you know um, thanking and skipping rocks or whatever the hell, right? Like it used to be a pretty pretty critical part of being human, being being in nature and you know just 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 you know 
being, you know, being there, you know, you know, being present. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, really, um, yeah, it's hard to do in the survival society. Um, definitely hard to do in the survival society. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's such an important point. And that's like one way that I started practicing that about four years ago is like, I really like going for like really long walks. And I'm talking like 15 miles, often more than 20 miles, like no phone. Mm-hmm. Like the only thing I might bring with me, you know, I might bring like a joint or a blunt or something like that, but it's like, if it's either that or nothing and just like walking around, like I used to, I used to live around Portland. I used to do it all around there. Um, you know, or like a hike obviously is best, but like, you know, six, eight, 10 hours of just walking and nothing else that, you know, oh, yeah. when I started doing that, it really, really changed, changed a lot for me. For sure. Yeah. You can't do that in Chacos as much out here. Uh, why is that? No, I do it in Chacos all the time. I actually try to do as much of it barefoot as possible. I've gotten to where I can, like on a rocky trail, I can hike three or four miles barefoot before I puss out and need to put shoes on. So yeah, that's I'm trying to extend that. All my experiences with Chacos out here is I get rocks stuck in my shoe and I have to like stop every quarter mile and fish them out. Uh, I don't know. It's amazing. They might be falling. They might be like falling off your skirt or something. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. It's not just me though. My girlfriend experiences it too. So boots for me, I haven't tried the barefoot thing in the desert. What stepping on a choya barefoot would be pretty shitty. That would not be good. But yeah, <laughs> we were, we were talking you know, it's kind of interesting. We were talking about like how Joe Rogan is controlled opposition, um, as is uh, well. Yeah, my my thing is just being confused. Like I have, that's my main thing. I don't know if he's, I don't know where you know who's telling him what, but it's just it's very confusing to me to know. You know, I grew up in Texas, like been listening to Alex Jones for a very long time, and uh, to to know who Joe Rogan was. 20, 30 years ago with Alex Jones, like to square that with, you know, who he is today of, do you really think the government would hurt us? Like he said, he says these things totally serious. And it's like, you know, they'll bring up this idea that there might be something fishy going on with the vaccine. And it's like, he acts like it's just completely blowing his mind that there could be some intentional aspect to any of this. And I'm like, what? Like you were, you, I pull up videos of you yelling about the moon landing being fake. Like, Stop fucking lying, God fucking damn! It. <laughs> like, how do you how do you go from that to here? That's uh, I just, and I have no, I did not have a good answer to that. Mm-hmm. I've not been able to figure it out. Well, I, I mean, the perspective that I have is like these people are status, and like Tim Pool. You know, you listen to Tim Pool. He complains about the government, and then he says, "Go primary politicians," and that's the solution. Or you know, you listen to Rogan, and it's coming from, you know, using Shane's language, like you know, this perspective of being in the servile society. Like that's that's the perspective, and the and the solutions are are based on that. Um, and so that's where I argue. I I don't know if there's somebody. Zorn keeps on sending comments and then deleting them. So that's interesting. Um, but I don't know if there's necessarily somebody sitting and even Alex Jones too, you know, controlled opposition because he's a fucking status, um, you know, talking about like, you know, we need to get law enforcement more active and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But I don't know if there's somebody necessarily sitting there like feeding them information stories to run like Reuters or CNN or, you know, those other groups but just from the perspective they are you know coming from where they continuously feed people back into the system um that's where i argue they're controlled opposition so. yeah that's yeah that's 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 definitely fair i mean i've i've been able to watch um i used to watch uh ever watch rogan every once in a while with when he had interesting guests on but i've been able to watch him for three or four years um uh it's i mean I don't know. I just, if you get that big, um, and it's not to say that he's like completely like, like he's complicit or anything like that. It's just when you get that big, like you have to make, you, you have to make, uh, some of the, some, you lose some of your, your freedom. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you've seen what they've done to, you know, some, some presidents and things like, um, it's not good if you get on their bad side. Um, and when speaking of today, right. Um, it's not, it's not really a, um, 
they they have no qualms with threatening families and you know all that stuff. So, um, and that's not to, to to defend him at all. I mean, I uh, I I had my my you know AJ phase too. Um, but I thankfully I had the um, my my start. I, I mentioned that you know the the constitutionalist um, perspective. Well, my my start really started with Bill Cooper, um, William uh, Millen William Cooper back in. Um, he was a radio host uh, in the nineties. Wrote a, wrote a book called Behold a Pale Horse. So like. Um, I knew of Alex Jones before I heard Alex Jones because I, I heard Bill calling him a shill. Um, he was lying. Bill was Bill went on Al, Alex's show back in 2000, 2001. And uh, Alex um, just they just lied a bunch about him. Um, so Bill called him out back uh, back in back in those days. Um, and and also, I mean, he would and he he would he did he did a pretty good job of exposing exposing people. I, I would say there was one that he got wrong um, that I can not confirm um, now. But um, I mean. It's yeah, it's it's uh, it's nothing new, and uh, you know the, the opposition is always you know historically it's always controlled, um, and it doesn't have to be like holding a gun to the back of someone's head. They've got a different ways of control now, um, and different ways than what are presented to you in the movies. So, um, yeah, when someone gets that big, I mean, I I, I don't really have any desire. Um, you know, really don't really have any any desire. And you're exactly right to to, to point out that they're just driving the, the solutions they present are right are driving people right back into the system. So they're um they're pawns. Um even if they may um, you know talk bad against it again, occasionally they're still helping them. Yeah. Yeah the new the new stuff that they do is they um um send send you over to Epstein's island and then take a bunch of videos of you. And yeah. plus one for Behold a Pale Horse. I really enjoyed that book. That's a good one to read if anyone has it. I haven't read that one yet. Yeah, def- definitely an important one. I've even gone back. Um, I, I got out of the, um, once I I went through, I listened to like, Bill, to like basically all 2,000 hours of Bill Cooper's radio show when I was working a moving job, like age 20 to 23. And um <clears throat> I, uh, then I found anarchism and solutions and it's like, well, this stuff doesn't really matter if there's no state for, you know, these secret societies to take over. I don't know if that's necessarily the truth now, but I know when 2020 happened and I, I heard about um, you guys probably, I, I'm sick of hearing about it myself, but like, um, the pre-planning of the, of the, the so-called health emergency, um, like, uh, um, I went back and dug, dug through a lot of Bill Cooper stuff. Um, and I've, there's some, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of the constitutional humping stuff that I don't really appreciate, um, at this point anymore, but I can still appreciate, um, you know, being like being in the nineties and talking about a lot of this stuff, um, and stuff that I guess that's even, even further out there and what's, what's, what, what's more commonly known now. It's uh, definitely, um, definitely incredibly, incredibly valuable in my opinion, at least, or at least, uh, there probably, uh, I don't know, three or four, um, episodes I found valuable of the hour of the time that I reposted on the Bonu site. Um, if anyone's uh, interested in uh, any Bill Cooper, um, you know, sample pieces before um, going to the very, uh, I guess, pre- early 2000 archives of his radio show, um, it's not podcast friendly. That's for sure. Nice. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely gonna check that out on your site. Yeah, I'll have to check it out too. I enjoyed listening to Ben Stone's stuff, um, his podcast, because that's not very uh, podcast friendly either. Yeah. So to be frank, I, I really hadn't listened to much of Ben's podcast. Um, I, I read his, I read Seditions, Seditions version of Sabotage and then met him at uh, the Modus Peace Liberty Fest one year. And so uh, we, I'd, I'd put together that, that group to, to do the audio book. And um, then, yeah, a couple, couple MPL fests after that, um, I went out and hung out at his place for, for, for a week or so. Um, but yeah, I hadn't really listened to his podcast um, much at all. Um, you can actually find on the LEA radio archives. We did a, um, did an episode from uh, from his uh, from his living room, oh, um, so cool. talking about the importance of building second realms. Whenever I didn't have a property or any second realm to, to speak of, permanent autonomous zones would would be the future. I just didn't know how it was going to happen, and got a got a little push in 2020 to to get this shit going. Because that's been my my biggest complaint. Um, like I, you know, being an anarchist is great and all, but at the end of 2015, I realized that like there weren't really many people talking about solutions. So um, that's been like the biggest. Like 2020 and all, and you know, 20, uh, 2020, 2021, and this year, um, I'm positive about this year, but um, I'm feeling positive about this year. But the last couple of years, I mean, yeah, it's been it's been good. People are people are moving, ready to organize. So, um, organizing the second realm, it's been it's been good. 
One of my favorite episodes that you did was uh, on the no-tell. I thought that was super interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, the, a lot of, so there's there's quite a few episodes now that are just unplanned and, like, they're just, they're strictly taken from conversations that happen in the Pasadena Committee Correspondence Group. Um, some of the stuff, like, I, I think I have good ideas sometimes, but some of these, you know, pseudonymous people that have been listening for years have, you know, have some interesting uh um, <laughs> have some, uh, some interesting ideas and, and yeah, that was a fun episode. Um, that was a, a fun episode. So I guess I can provide some background. There's a, a hashtag Agora, a crypto Agora novella that was published anonymously on uh, the Anerplex, uh, dot net website. Um, there was a, um, a, a, there's a, a, an example given a fictional example. Um, that's uh, you know, it's a nondescript building. Um, you scan, you scan something to get in the door. Um, then when you're renting your room or whatever, you pay, you scan it, pay with Bitcoin or whatever. Um, and it's just, it's an anonymous, you know, um, you know, Airbnb hotel room for the night, the no tell. Um, so we did an episode on that talking about the, the feasibility of, of, of that and some of the, the hurdles and, and, uh, and those sorts of things. And so I wish I could recall more details off the top of my head that we talked about, but, um, yeah, that was a, that was a fun episode for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, uh, I don't know, those those types of uh, kind of underground businesses like that seem very, very, you know, interesting. And you think of, I, I, I guess, like, the, the, the popular one that, that people t- tend to think of is, like, speakeasies, and we've kind of seen a resurgence of that um, over the past year with, you know, the lockdown limitations and stuff like that. But that can be, you know essentially implemented anywhere in, in anything and like the no tell of like you know being able to try it was funny when you were talking about the silver coins earlier i was thinking of um john wick um the hotel that they had where they lay the silver coin down I, i'm not sure if you've seen that Mm-mm, i'm not okay so like essentially there's like this criminal underworld and uh they have their own, you know, currency that they use to exchange um, for things, and they have a, a hotel that you only use that currency in, and it's neutral, um, so you can't kill anybody in it. Um, and it was just, I don't know, that's super interesting. But yeah, I mean that that concept is super cool, and we can do so many. Like I, I just think back to the Silk Road and what Ross Albrecht did, and how he was just spot on um with the stuff that he was thinking about and doing yeah yeah certainly certainly um i mean yeah there there are a lot of possibilities and i I guess i should talk talked a lot about you know permanent autonomous zones and you know um you know off-grid homesteading and and the like but um you know there uh, the no-tell being one of them there are there are city possibilities for you know city vanu and, you know, liberated lifestyles. Um, I, I talked to uh, folks over at, uh, they do the Agora podcast, Sec and uh, Penguin. And uh, Sec ran a, a gorilla garden in the middle of a, on a bunch of city blocks, um, you know, back in the day. And, uh, you know, bludgy saw, but, you know, they were growing food and they, they effed off, thankfully. Um, so, like, there, there's that possibility. There's a, um, there's a, a book that we're hopefully going to be, repub- uh, you know, uh, publishing over at LUI Publications, re- re- uh, republishing uh, Carl Hess's Community Technology. And so, well, I haven't read or listened to it myself. I'm going to. Sec was talking about, or Penguin was, in uh, the 200th two Fondu episode, how, like, uh, he had aquaponics, you know, fish aquaponics systems in basements, mm-hmm. um, like, he's using, you know, very, you know, minimal, uh, you know, minimal investment and in, 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 in tools and stuff. So, like, there's so many possibilities regardless. It's just, like, as, as we've kind of been talking about, um, the, the, I guess, at least, or at least a little bit ago, is that, like, um, you can only, you know, like, you get you can only act upon the possibilities and, and the solutions that you see that, that you see as possibilities, right? If you, if you don't know that they exist, you can't act upon them. Mm-hmm. And the Serval society presents like, um, like they, 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 they limit you to very, very few choices. And those few choices basically come down to like, as, as we've been talking about, like convenience and ease. Um, and those force people back into the system. Well, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a, um, there's there's a lot of uh, possibilities, whether city or wilderness or, um, you know, perpetual traveling. And Vanu is primarily a, a nomadic lifestyle. So Rayo was a, a van nomad for a while, 
And so then he moved out to, and, and lived in uh, the wilderness Fonu, um, and basically camped around uh, the Siskiyou, um, Siskiyou region, um, Northern California and Southern Oregon. And uh, um, so that was him, but uh, you know, general, general nomadic lifestyles, perpetual traveling, I um, mean, kind of the digital nomadism thing is very much enabled by Bitcoin. Um, and uh, yeah, there's, there's uh, what, yeah, whatever, whatever people's, uh, you know, situations are, whatever, uh, you know, whatever position they find themselves in, um, there are solutions out there. Um, you just gotta, you just gotta start looking. And obviously if they're listening to your podcast, they're into Bitcoin they're they're already, uh, you know, probably far down that path. So that's, uh, that's, that's great to see. And uh, yeah, great, great to hear. But uh, um, yeah, there's a lot of, well, there's, you know, endless, endless solutions. As I, as I said before, the only limitation of liberation is, is, you know, um, you know, your imagination, you just gotta, you just gotta think and uh, um, yeah, think big. I still, my, my think big um, for those who are curious is um, I envision um, like, uh, like decommissioned aircraft carriers or floating floatels, floating hotels as like uh, um, floating, you know, liberated areas out in, out in international waters. Like it's going to happen someday. Like I'm going to, like, I, I may not be me, but, but shit, it's, I mean, it's going to happen. Um, it's, it's, it's going to happen. Steve, tell me your prediction um, about the aircraft. I was, I, was, I was just about to say uh, a bet that I like to make with uh, like people that are like real, just like real captured in this kind of status mindset of, if the federal government doesn't allow it, it's not possible, but there's kind of all that's like, but anyway, a bet that I like to make with those people to, you know, potentially kind of break them out. As I say, what year do you think a uh, nuclear powered aircraft carrier will be sold for Bitcoin? And then tell them that my bet is sometime between 2028 and 2032. And with the implication being by then the U S federal government will be so hard up for funds that they're just scrounging to, cause nobody wants their money anymore. And so they're in again, I don't know if that's the time frame or if it's 50 years later or next week, you know, and it's probably not next week. Um, but just the idea of like, there will come a day when the money has been so debased that nobody wants it anymore and that they, you know, they can print all the money they want and it won't get them what they actually, you know, are what these people in power are actually trying to get. And so they will be have to resort to selling resources for, for Bitcoin to raise to raise money like so they actually have some funds um and that that'll be part mm-hmm. of their death spiral yeah. but i don't know it's it's fun i, I try, try to think of things like like real quick questions or bets or like something that can just get you know like think of somebody who's been a boomer and you know has totally been you know voted republican you know all this kind of stuff and like to get them to realize oh there's you know i might disagree but there's at least a perspective out there that we don't need and won't have a federal government someday, you know, and then obviously, you know, they probably won't go all the way down the road to anarchism, but just, to, I don't know, get them to think about it a little bit. Zorn. Yeah, no. So you, you guys have heard, you guys have heard, you've obviously heard of like, uh, you know, the, the temporary autonomous zone raves where like they, they announced the address the last, the last minute and then people go and you do their drugs and have their party. And um, the next weekend it's a different place. Well, like I, I envision like, Again, like I, I and it may be, you know, I, I dream big, um, forgive me for dreaming big, but like I envision like the, the macro version of that being like, uh, um, you know, this, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, um, I don't know the, the, the Tasney aircraft carrier, you know, puts out its, its notice to, you know, the, um, over the, over the network that there's, it's going to be parked in the case cell bank. And, you know, all the, all the boats come out there for the, you know, for, you know, the, the trade and the, and the gathering and maybe the, uh, you know, what would be illegal, you know, medical services could be issued there. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless mm-hmm. and, you know, I can, I can see that happening and, and we're already kind of seeing things go in that direction. And I don't think it's that, I don't think it's that crazy. Um, might just be, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, but still. Yeah. That's not that long. Yeah. Zorn predicts. No. That- the USS Ford is 13.3 billion USD or 0.5 Bitcoin. <laughs> so 50, 50 million sats is Zorn's uh, price prediction for an aircraft carrier. That's pretty, that's pretty uh, optimistic. Well, unless, unless you get, um, I've seen a couple over the past few years. Uh, one might have been even 2020, 2019, 2019 or 2020. But then I found another one, 2017. Someone, someone asked how much you could pay, how much it would cost for a decommissioned aircraft carrier, and I was like, well, I've seen them, I've seen them for sale before. Let me go find out. 
Um, well, there was one where they, it was obviously a fascist deal, um, but they sold um, a de- an old decommissioned, you know, worn down aircraft carrier for like a dollar to some private company so they could scrap it. Um, and then there was another one that wasn't, it wasn't that much. Like, um, it's really like talking, you know, like low millions. Like I, I don't remember exactly, but like think three or 4 million or something like that. The floating hotel is 8 million. Um, the, the one I saw a few years back, but I mean, it's really like, you talk about like, uh, um, Bitcoin, you know, moons very soon. And again, price doesn't matter, but like, we're, this is like a, you know, a voluntary redistribution of wealth. So like they're going to be some rich folks, um, in our networks that'll have private jets and have decommissioned aircraft carrier. Maybe, maybe, you know what I, you know what I mean? Like, um, there'll be some rich, some rich folks in our, in our, you know, in, in the Bitcoin, you know, liberation arena. So I think the possibilities are, are really endless. No, no. I got the money! Another another one we talk about is uh, Bitcoiners don't shop for Citadels on Zillow. Uh, they shop on like these like government auction websites when they start auctioning off secret underground bases and things like that. It's like just kind of <laughs> get people to think a little bit bigger. It's like we're we're you know we're all about the fall of the American Empire, not one more McMansion that there's 27 million of. <laughs> I need to get back on those government right. auction sites. They they've got some interesting stuff on there. Like they're always selling like old Hummers and things like that. Yeah. Then if you're a, if you're a good diesel mechanic, you can get a sweet deal on a Hummer on there. Even if even, you're not, they're not terribly expensive. I don't even think you have to be a decent mechanic on cars like those because the engine blocks are so big and they sit so high, you can pretty much do everything without having a tremendous amount of you know need, need a lift and I mean, maybe to yeah. lift the en- engine out, you do, but it lowers the cost tremendously. Yeah. I, I've been wanting a truck because it's hard to be self-sufficient with the Honda Civic, so. Biodiesel is a rabbit hole I went down a while ago. Um, that's, yeah, that's always been, I've like kicked around like if I was ever going to start a side hobby business or something like that. It'd be one of those like vegetable collection agencies or not agencies, but like companies like vegetable oil, like go around all the restaurants and take their vegetable oil. And then you can turn it into biodiesel to run all your shit. Cause you can, I think I, I can't imagine it would work for mining Bitcoin, but that a diesel generator running on biodiesel or just running straight on vegetable oil would be a pretty reliable source of a tremendous amount of power. Yeah. Maybe we could start a meme where we find a way to use a uh, grapeseed oil. Uh, to run it. <laughs> yeah, that that'd be a proper use of uh, grapeseed oil instead of ingesting it. Yeah, that would. Maybe we could partner with Texas Slim to do that. But yeah. All right, we're about two hours in. Um, trying to think of things I've got to shield this week. So Santos is doing a meet up tomorrow up in phoenix i unfortunately won't be able to make it because i'm feeling like crap um but uh he's doing a presentation on lightning for everyone which will be pretty cool um that guy's working on some pretty dope stuff that he'll be announcing here pretty soon i'm pretty excited um good anarchist to support for sure uh and then i'm doing a presentation on home mining on saturday uh which i'm really excited about and we have an S9 giveaway. Um, so if you show up, you have a chance to take a miner home and get it set up that day. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, we, we got to I'm just so over these these intermediaries um, in Bitcoin. Like we, we can route around the exchanges and we can route around the surveillance and home mining is a great option to do that. Um, also working on getting Azteco uh, terminal set up. We are launching um, through the Arizona Bitcoin network. We're launching um, the Satoshi Chamber of Com- Commerce and the School of Nakamoto um, to both try and on ramp businesses and to accepting Bitcoin, and selling Bitcoin through Azteco, and then also teach people about these you know good practices. Um, so we're going to be pretty active. Uh, in our community, you know, getting businesses onboarded as well as like teaching people um, more in depth outside of the meetups, which I'm really, really excited about this year. Um, 
So if you're in Arizona and you're not plugged into what we're doing, um, have fun staying poor. Um, but yeah. yeah. And I was going to say one more, like um, Bitcoin miner, we've talked about this on here before, but it's like Bitcoin miners that have electric bills that they need to pay in dollars are a fantastic source of KYC free sats. Yep. Um, so um, if you can connect with, and that's, that's something I'm optimistic about is more and more of us move more of our income onto, you know, to mining and different things like that, that are, that are Bitcoin exclusive. Um, at least for the foreseeable future, there will be a need for dollars periodically. And so that's fantastic. It's like go to a meetup, one person brings cash, the other person brings Bitcoin and everybody goes home happy. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's solid. And the, yeah, I, I don't think there should be any excuse for going to a meetup and not being able to buy Bitcoin from somebody there. I think that that needs to be a common occurrence. Um, but yeah. Um, Shane, you got anything to show? Um, I guess I'll, I'll just say for anyone interested in learning more about, uh, learning more, joining the, the Pasadena Second Realm Network, uh, um, check out the website. I've got, um, the, uh, 2021, 2022 stakeholder bulletin. Um, it goes into, we've got kind of three stage, three stage vision. Um, first year was food self sufficiency. This, this, this next coming years is more building out the network and getting the digital second realm set up like the Pasnia, um, freedom boxes, the digital seed exchanges, hopefully like a, a form of a decentralized transportation logistics network. Um, the Pasnia department of transportation, as I mentioned earlier, um, but yeah, um, you can learn, learn, learn about all that and how to, how to get involved. Um, Pazania.com, P-A-Z-N-I-A.com. And, um, yeah, if you found any of the, uh, self-abration talk, uh, interesting, I do, uh, the Vanu podcast, uh, over at vanupodcast.com. And, uh, I always do recommend, um, just cause it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, sure. It's a branch of, you know, a, a branch of libertarian thought per se, but Vanu is a, uh, um, a pretty unique philosophy and does certainly, um, you know, practice, um, action. So, um, I do recommend people start back at season one. Um, we'll take you a little bit of time to get through, but that's what a lot of people will say they do. And that's, that's what I, um, I think that's where you're going to get the most value. Um, but of course you can always just go to the, the podcast feed and, and listen to whatever, whatever suits your fancy. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess the last thing, Liberty Intertech Publications, if you're looking for, um, you know, strategy guides, uh, you know, second round book on strategy, um, hashtag Agora, um, really good, uh, crypto anarchist fiction, like, uh, brush fire, um, Lots of good stuff over there on um, liberty, liberty under attack.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, with that guys, I, I definitely appreciate, uh, appreciate the conversation. It's the first live stream I've done in a while. I stopped trying to do them. Um, so they'd work about 50% of the time at the homestead, but I got better internet now. So maybe I'll start, I'll try to start doing them again, but, um, yeah, I appreciate, I, I started with live radio, so I always appreciate the live format and, uh, I appreciate what you guys are doing too, especially, you know, getting people using Bitcoin and physical space and time, getting people to get people together. That's uh, that's incredible. And uh, I'm definitely going to need to uh, to catch up on your guys's podcast. So um, I can already tell I could I could learn a lot in the um, from and the, the from, you know in the Bitcoin realm from you guys. So um, and maybe even get you on Vonu at some point if you guys would be interested. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Shane just yeah. or Zorn just sent me two sats to share with you. So if you wanted to message me a lightning invoice for two sats, I can send <laughs> it over. Um, <laughs> but uh, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective. And I'm really, really thankful that people that listen to this got, got an intro to that and hopefully dig into the podcast and everything like that. Like I know I definitely will be doing some more of for sure. Yeah. I mean, I just got to say man. the podcast it, it, and the work that you're doing is such a breath of fresh air. It, it, like exiting like the state of narrative just feels so good. It, it feels good to have other options than you know, these cucks like Rogan and Tim pool and, you know, whoever else, um, <laughs> and to, to be actually challenged and instead of just like sitting here and just like consuming, like, yeah, the government sucks. The government sucks. The government sucks. It's like, this is how you limit coercion in your life and actually do something productive with your time instead of just, you know, sitting around and whining. Um, as far as your publishing company, I think you do something, you can download the content that you buy and actually own it. Correct. Um, so yeah, the, everything that we put out is available, is available for free online. Um, all, yeah, all the books, except for a couple that we did for, we did for clients. They have, they might have copies out, uh, PDF copies out themselves, but everything we okay. put out is available for free. Um, I, I only started it cause I, I was publishing my book and, and went through the whole process and figured I could help other people do it here in the, uh, you know, in the liberation community. But, uh, um, yeah, everything's, everything's available for free. Um, 
And uh, I get, yeah, the other, the other driving force was I, I found all these, you know, 1960s and seventies Vanu, you know, zines um, that Rayo put out, um, you know, like a innovator, um, the uh, Vanu life, which is an incredible, um, these, these folks um, were, um, you know, hardcore self liberators back in like 1970s, early 1970s. Um, so I, I've been digitizing those and putting them out and I figured I'd put them out in paperback format too. And that's, that entails most of the, well, most of what we put out at LA publications, but there's still a lot of, uh, you know, unique, uh, unique authors that are putting, putting out stuff now. Um, so, yeah. Nice. I see you have a book called, uh, government, the biggest scam in history, um, or something. Do you think, mm-hmm. do you think the government's a bigger scam than Ethereum? <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's close, huh? <laughs> for what it's worth, I would say yes. I think the government's the biggest scam <laughs> in the history of humanity. Yeah, that, yeah for sure. I would, <laughs> I, I would say yes, too. Um, well, cool, man. Thanks for coming on. Uh, big shout out and thank you to the uh, people in chat and on the Twitter spaces. Hobo, didn't get any bong rips tonight. Bummer. Um, <laughs> he's, he's been in here, though. Um, we didn't get into any conspiracy theories. You got any favorite conspiracy theories to, uh, oh, Shane, what's your website again? Oh, uh, so there's a uh, vonnypod.com and paznia.com for, for paznia and in the, in the podcast. I'm not sure which one or libertyattack.com for the books. I'm going to put too many websites. No. I'll put them in the chat. Liber- I was just looking at libertyunderattack.com. Paznia yeah. is for like the Paznia network, and then Vanu is the Vanu podcast. Um, cool. Well, I'm going to end this stream. Okay.